It has been called the most demonic structure known to man, and tonight, these two warriors take their place on the battleground with hopes of outlasting the other and walking away with the richest reward obtainable. The WWE Championship, an Iconoclast, an Apex Predator, and a one-way trip to hell in a cell. Teams of three align together for the ultimate bragging rights competition. Who will fall by the wayside and who will walk away victorious? Who will scratch and claw from bell to bell and be willing to pay the price to hold the gold? And who will be the last man standing? A rising star, a franchise player, and absolutely no holds bar. Tonight, only the toughest men and women will enter these hallowed halls, but only the strongest will survive. Welcome inside a sold out TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts for your Thanksgiving 2022 edition of the WWE Survivor Series. Tonight, a last man standing matchup with a lot of bragging rights on the line. The WWE Championship will be defended inside Hell in the Cell and so much more here tonight. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. And we kick things off with the prestigious Cruiserweight Championship on the line. Boston, Massachusetts, the host to your Thanksgiving 2022 Fall Classic Survivor Series. And here comes the number one contender for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. This man, Roderick Strong, a former NXT North American Champion and a former NXT Tag Team Champion, now a part of the main roster, looking to add the Cruiserweight Championship to his already impressive list of accolades. I want to take you back to a number of weeks ago on main event where Roderick Strong arose from NXT as a part of the eight-man over-the-top rope battle royal. Things came down to himself, as well as Isaiah Swerve Scott, a former contender for the Cruiserweight Championship. But in the end, Roddy Strong taking advantage of the momentum, and look at this, able to eliminate Isaiah Swerve Scott, win the matchup, and Roderick Strong punched his ticket to Survivor Series to become the number one contender for the one and only Ricochet's Cruiserweight Championship of the World. It's going to be a great night here in Boston. Two Survivor Series, six-man elimination matchup signed. All the championships are on the line. The Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament Finals will be concluded here tonight. And, of course, as we mentioned, your main event inside Hell in a Cell. The WWE Championship is on the line as the Rated R Superstar Edge defends the gold against the Apex Predator, Randy Orton. But here comes the one and the only cruiserweight champion of the world, Ricochet. For 151 days, Ricochet has been atop the cruiserweight division as its king, defeating Santos Escobar on not one but two occasions. Isaiah Swerve Scott, he defeated Wes Lee, Chad Gable. Ricochet has put together an impressive list of challengers that he has put to the wayside over the last number of months. But tonight may be Ricochet's biggest test yet. Roderick Strong's been hot and heavy ever since coming from NXT. You remember just last night, 24 hours ago, on your Wednesday night edition of Main Event, that tag team matchup between Ricochet and Dolph Ziggler versus Roderick Strong and the Intercontinental Champion Tommaso Ciampa. Roderick Strong pinned Dolph Ziggler to build some more momentum for himself coming in tonight. Roderick Strong's been looking good ever since arriving from NXT. But as we mentioned, you're looking at the king of the cruiserweight division for 151 days is the one and only Ricochet. What a better way to kick off the Survivor Series pay-per-view with the prestigious cruiserweight championship of the world on the line. Let's send things down to the ring for your official in-ring introductions. Introducing the challenger from Tampa, Florida, weighing in at 200 pounds. Strong. And 
introducing the champion from Paducah, Kentucky, weighing in at 190 pounds. He is the WWE Cruiserweight It has been known as one of the big four pay-per-views in the WWE calendar. Tonight is no different. The Fall Classic Survivor Series kicks off with the defending Cruiserweight Champion of the World, the one and only Ricochet, putting the gold on the line versus the Messiah of the Backbreaker, Roderick Strong. Two very different styles, a contrast in styles inside the squared circle to open us up here tonight. Should be one hell of a contest on what is already looking to be an extraordinary in Extraordinary night of action, excuse me, inside of the squared circle. And Roderick Strong immediately going for that pump kick, or excuse me, I should say Ricochet goes for the pump kick. And Roderick Strong gonna look to ground Ricochet in this matchup. Should be very interesting to see, as we mentioned, the contrast of styles in this Cruiserweight Championship matchup. And already Roderick Strong, again, looking to do some damage on Ricochet. For Ricochet tonight, it's about using his abilities to his advantage, taking things through the air. Roger Strong going to make sure that the one and only cannot utilize his strong suits. Got to watch out for Ricochet, or excuse me, got to watch out for Roger Strong. Going to look to do the damage to the lower back of Roger, or excuse me, of Ricochet. We're all over the place tonight. Excited to be here in Boston. We mentioned that on main event just 24 hours ago. You take out the lower back of your opponent, and Ricochet will not be able to take things to the air like he normally does. Impressive ripcord knee off the get-go. Roderick Strong just may be the kryptonite for the superhero run of Ricochet atop the Cruiserweight division. We're going to find out in due time. Ricochet trying to build some momentum here, but there's Strong again dropping Ricochet on the knee. And it's clear as day what Roderick Strong's strategy is coming into this matchup. The Messiah, the backbreaker for a reason. It's about the third or fourth time already that Ricochet has taken a landing on that lower back. Roger's going to look to take out the high-flying abilities that have aided Ricochet in the past. We've seen Ricochet do extraordinary things inside of this ring. It's helped him win and retain the Cruiserweight Championship time and time again. We see the one and only trying to get out of the corner before things get too ugly in this matchup. And again, a nice snapmare. Taking Ricochet, or excuse me, taking Roger Strong over. Ricochet now. I think we know what's coming. Going to look to take things to the air. A little classic one and only here. Beautiful picture, perfect mood so for the champion. Smart to go right to the cover. I'm gonna capitalize on the momentum, but a little too early. May not have been looking for the finish just there, but just trying to get in the head of his challenger here tonight. As we mentioned, just 24 hours ago, beautiful shooting star press on Roger Strong. And Strong kicks out at two. You see the kick out got a little bit harder that time. Ricochet obviously doing some damage early on with those high flying maneuvers. Again, just 24 hours ago, Roderick Strong and the Intercontinental Champion Tommaso Ciampa defeating Ricochet and Dolph Ziggler in that tag team encounter on main event. So momentum has got to be in the corner of the challenger here tonight. Ricochet again takes it to the air. Topek and Hilo over the top rope. The one and only doing what the one and only does best inside of the squared circle. Showcasing the abilities of the Cruiserweight Champion here tonight at Survivor Series. Ricochet looking good off the get-go and takes it to the air again with the corkscrew. And the challenger has found himself in deep waters early on in this contest. Ricochet noticed what Roger Strong's strategy was, as we mentioned in the early on, to take out the high-flying abilities. Ricochet trying to make sure that that does not play in the favor of the Messiah the Backbreaker. First we saw the moonsault, then the shooting star, then up and over the top rope, then the corkscrew. Ricochet pulling out any and all stops to retain the Cruiserweight Championship here tonight in Boston. Ricochet trying to bring things back into the ring, but looks like Roderick Strong is going to look to take advantage of the surroundings here. Oh no, and well, thankfully Ricochet landed on his feet. But Roderick Strong again grabbing a hold of the Cruiserweight Champion, and Ricochet takes a fall down on the floor. And that is not going to go well in the later parts of this matchup for the Cruiserweight Championship. Oh, and Ricochet just eats the steel steps. Roderick Strong trying to ground and pound on the Cruiserweight Champion. And this is your first of several championship matches here this evening still to come. Tommaso Ciampa defends the Intercontinental Championship against Dolph Ziggler. What about Asuka 
who has also been the champion since SummerSlam for 151 days, defending the Women's Championship against Shotzi. Of course, we're going to have the finals of the Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament here this evening as The Way take on Io Shirai and Zia Lee. And again, Roderick Strong is beating the hell out of the Cruiserweight Champion on the outside. And you notice Roderick headed back in the ring here to break the count. He can't win the Cruiserweight Championship on a count out, but he is certainly doing a number on the champion on the outside of the ring right now. Maybe that half a second delay was enough for the Cruiserweight Champion to get his wits about him. Ricochet smart to take this thing back into the ring, or at least try to take this thing back into the ring. Roderick Strong still on the outside, making his way back inside the squared circle. And here comes Ricochet. Roderick Strong sidestep the clothesline, and now the Messiah, the backbreaker. No counter to drop toe hold. Back and forth we go. The pendulum swings with momentum. Ricochet to the corner, takes Strong down. Oh no, springboard, beautiful Phoenix Splash from the Cruiserweight Champion. Straight into the cover, but Strong, a kick out at one. And you gotta imagine that Roderick Strong, beating down on Ricochet the last number of minutes, also allowed Roderick Strong to kind of regain some momentum and rest up on the abilities in the offense of Ricochet. But there he goes again, into the cover goes the champion, but the challenger still has life left in him. What a way to kick off Survivor Series here tonight. Happy Thanksgiving to you all watching at home, live here on the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel. The Fall Classic Survivor Series, our next universe mode pay-per-view. Bearing witness to it right now as Roderick Strong down on the floor on the outside. Wait a minute, Ricochet, beautiful shooting star press, taking things to the sky, to the outside. There is no other man who can do what Ricochet can do inside of that squirt circle. There is a reason he has been atop the cruiserweight division for 151 days as its champion. And you smell the sense of urgency in Roderick Strong right now, trying to capitalize why Ricochet's got his back turned. He sends him down to the canvas. It's now or never for Roderick Strong. A lot of high-flying maneuvers from Ricochet. Wait a minute. He's got them all tied up. We've seen this maneuver in the past, and it's paid Ricochet dividends. Strong's down. Ricochet to the top. Beautiful 630. And into the cover he goes, but Ricochet has better watch that ring awareness. Roger Strong's foot underneath the bottom rope. He's got to get Strong away from the ropes there. That was a huge missed opportunity from the Cruiserweight Champion. We don't see the champion make a lot of mistakes inside of that ring. But unfortunately, he was not able to capitalize the 6.30. He's going back up, and he may be looking for a 6.30, making a dose. And plenty of room away from the ropes this time. And the championship remains with the one and only Ricochet. What a matchup to kick us off here at Survivor Series. You got to give credit where it's due. Roderick Strong putting up a fight here tonight. But the championship stays in the grasp of that man right there, the one and only Ricochet, gonna make it past 151 days. The championship remains on the one and only. What well, is time for your first of two Survivor Series six man elimination matchups here tonight? It is Team Sheamus versus Team Drew McIntyre, 3v3. Who are gonna be the last men standing in this matchup? Who are gonna be the sole survivors? And here is Team Captain, number one. The following contest is a six man tag team match. Introducing first from Dublin, Ireland, weighing in at 267 pounds. The Celtic Warrior, Sheamus! Sheamus has had a decorated career here in the WWE, but most recently has found himself in the loop of the Intercontinental Championship. And that's really the story with the Celtic Warrior against all of his opponents here tonight. He has had history with all three men on the opposing team, Drew McIntyre, Pete Dunne, and Shinsuke Nakamura since the beginning of this year. He defeated Shinsuke all the way back on April the 11th at Backlash to become the Intercontinental Champion, lost that championship in a triple threat matchup to Drew McIntyre and Pete Dunne back at SummerSlam where Pete Dunne pinned Drew McIntyre. Sheamus and Drew met back at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view 
was Drew McIntyre picked up the win on that night. And Sheamus, of course, most recently costing Pete Dunne the Intercontinental Championship back at Judgment Day and defeating him inside the steel cage back on main event. And from Bidway State, Nigeria, weighing in at 241 pounds, Apollo Apollo Crews, another man who finds himself intertwined with almost everybody on the opposing side of the ring. Remember back at Backlash as well, the night Pete Dunne arrived from NXT, who did he face on that night? Well, he answered an open challenge from Apollo Crews, and most recently, Apollo Crews has really gotten drug into this situation. Remember back in August, at Saturday night's main event, Apollo Crews went one-on-one -on -one with the, the debuting, excuse me, Rick Boogs from NXT. Apollo Crews went on to win that matchup that night, but recently we've seen an alliance between Rick Boogs and Shinsuke Nakamura, which has really drug Apollo Crews and Rick Boogs' situation and issues between each other into this situation before us here tonight. Rick Boogs not participating in this matchup. Nakamura here to defend his honor to go one-on-one -on -one with Apollo Crews. And, of course, 3v3 in this six-man tag team elimination matchup. And, of course, Apollo Crews and his henchman, Commander Aziz, not in the building tonight. He was knocked out on Monday Night Raw by a Claymore kick from Drew McIntyre. And as for this man, the Prince Finn Balor, hot off the heels of a win over Shinsuke Nakamura just 24 hours ago on your Wednesday night main event. And from Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland, weighing in at 190 pounds, Finn. So not only has Balor gotten that victory just 24 hours ago on main event against the King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura, but Balor in recent history owns not one, but two victories over the Scottish psychopath Drew McIntyre. Two wins that I'm sure McIntyre is looking to get some retribution from here tonight. And you remember Finn Balor a couple of months ago, August the 7th, at Extreme Rules, went one-on-one -on -one with Pete Dunne, who was then the Intercontinental Champion. So some history there between those two men. Of course, Pete Dunne walked out on that night with the Intercontinental Championship. It was an absolutely wrestling clinic that night in Seattle. But for Finn Balor, it's about continuing on with some of his recent momentum. Wins over Drew McIntyre, a win over Shinsuke Nakamura. For Balor tonight, as we mentioned, keep the momentum going for the Prince. Let's see if he could do that alongside Apollo Crews and Sheamus. And it's really Nakamura, Pete Dunne, and McIntyre who have been on a lot of the losing situations between these three guys over the last number of months. So it shouldn't be very interesting to see who walks away with the momentum tonight. One side is looking to get out with their Ws. The other side looking to get out with the Ws as well, but also looking for a measure of retribution here tonight at Survivor Series. And of course, this is the first of two Survivor Series six-man elimination matches that you are going to see here this evening. Later up tonight, the phenomenal AJ Styles alongside the current WWE World Tag Team Champions Damian Priest and Dominic Dijakovic going to go 3v3 against the Hurt Business, Cedric Alexander, Shelton Benjamin, and the almighty Bobby Lashley. That's coming up later tonight. Team Sheamus is set and ready for battle, but here comes the opposers. First up, the king of strong style, Shinsuke Nakamura. It's been a rough week for Nakamura. Let's see if he can bounce back here tonight. Boston is on fire. They're loving Shinsuke here in the garden. Weighing in at 220 pounds, he is the artist known as Shinsuke Nakamura! Not only was Nakamura knocked off by Finn Balor last night on main event, but unfortunately for Shinsuke, he took another loss to Austin Theory this past Monday night on Raw. Granted, Finn Balor stuck his nose in Nakamura's business, making his way to ringside, taking Nakamura's eye off the ball on that matchup. So Nakamura not only with a measure of revenge to Finn Balor here tonight, a measure of revenge to Apollo Crews for all of those recent issues with Rick Boogs. And for Nakamura, two losses this week already, does not want to make it a third. But with Pete Dunne and Drew McIntyre by his side, he certainly has a formidable team to get back into the winning ways here tonight at Survivor Series. Nakamura enters, and here comes tag team partner numero one. Weighing in 
105 pounds. The Bruiserweight Pete Dunn. The Bruiserweight Pete Dunn has certainly got a score to settle with Team Sheamus, but specifically the Celtic Warrior himself, as we mentioned earlier. It was back at Judgment Day in September where Pete Dunne was already walking into a matchup with Tommaso Ciampa with injuries looming from the previous weeks where he was attacked earlier in the night by the Celtic Warrior Sheamus, issues stemming from all the way back at SummerSlam. Pete Dunne went on to lose the Intercontinental Championship to Tommaso Ciampa on that night. Pete Dunne and Sheamus finally looking to settle the score inside a steel cage a number of weeks ago on main event and unfortunately for Pete Dunne, Sheamus walked away with the victory. But you gotta give credit to the Bruiserweight. It took not one, not two, but three bro kicks to keep Pete Dunne down on that night. And I'm sure the Bruiserweight has not forgotten not only about that loss, but about all the issues between himself and the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. The Pete Dunne tonight looking to get a measure of retribution over the Celtic Warrior. And here comes your team captain to oppose Sheamus and his squad, the Scottish Psychopath, the King of the Claymore, Drew McIntyre. A laser focused look on that man tonight. Look at a walk away of Boston with a big old W. And from Air Scotland, weighing in at 254 pounds. It has been well documented that this year has been a rough one for Drew McIntyre when it comes to the big match situations. The biggest win of this year has got to come for McIntyre back at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view where we mentioned he went one-on-one -on -one with the Celtic Warrior Sheamus and no holds barred and walked away with the victory on that night. But still for McIntyre, it's been a roller coaster of a year and tonight could really help solidify Drew McIntyre back on the right path for his career with Pete Dunne and Shinsuke Nakamura by his side. This is a motivated, fired up team of three men with hell pent on retribution tonight. And here we go, the stage is set. The time is now your first of two Survivor Series six-man elimination matches here tonight. It looks like we're gonna kick things off with the Celtic Warrior versus Shinsuke Nakamura here. 3v3, remember, this is an elimination style. It can be eliminated by pinfall, submission, countout, or disqualification. Once one team is completely gone, the members that are still remaining on the opposing team will be declared your sole survivors and the winners of this matchup. And Sheamus better keep his eye on the ball because Nakamura is coming out motivated tonight. Looking to knock out Sheamus early. And Nakamura tagging in the bruiser weight. And you know Pete Dunne's been chomping at the bit to get his hands on Sheamus yet again. Picking right back up where we left off inside of that steel cage a number of weeks ago. Oh, and Sheamus tagging out. Tagging in Apollo Crews. Almost like he doesn't want to deal with the bruiser weight at this current moment in the matchup. Apollo Crews, though, in there with Pete Dunne. Again, these two men got history dating all the way back to April the 11th of this year. Apollo Crews had issued an open challenge in the Backlash pay-per-view and is accepted by a debuting from NXT. Bruiserweight Pete Dunne. And what a run Pete Dunne has had ever since becoming the Intercontinental Champion. Pay-per-view caliber matchups. It's been a great career on the main roster thus far for Pete Dunne. Let's see if he can get back in the momentum here tonight. Pete Dunne taking Apollo Crews over and the Bruiserweight doing what he does best, beating down his opponent. And now a tag made, team captain is in, and business has just picked up. Drew McIntyre and Apollo Crews, and remember, as we mentioned this past Monday Night on Raw, McIntyre went one-on-one -on -one with the big man, as usually in the quarter of Apollo Crews, that being Commander Aziz. They gotta give credit where it's due. Aziz put up a fight and really hung in there with McIntyre for a few moments, but a future shock DDT and a Claymore kick all the way from Scotland to Los Angeles on Monday night. Aided Drew McIntyre in a victory against Commander Aziz. And here we go. Balor versus Nakamura, the legal men now. Pick him right back up where we left off last night on main event. And remember, it was it Finn Balor who picked up the victory. A kid recently been in the corner of Finn Balor after really gaining the respect of a prince. Rick Boogs usually in the corner of Nakamura as of late, but tonight, just these six men out here looking to settle the score with no questions asked. Balor 
Got to stay on Nakamura. He knows this. Nakamura looking to take advantage and a nice German suplex to the Prince. Shinsuke not looking to take another loss. Not just to Finn Balor, but to, in general here tonight after a rough week, as we mentioned. Tag back to Drew McIntyre and Apollo Crews yet again. Tagged in. And we've yet to see McIntyre and Sheamus Lockhorn for two team captains, but at some point, you know those two behemoths are going to be let loose inside of the ring. McIntyre grabbing a hold of Apollo Crews. Look at this. Look at the strength of Drew McIntyre. Apollo Crews is no small man. A lot of muscle on that man right there, but McIntyre just manhandling him inside of the ring. And bringing him into enemy territory here. Let's see what Drew McIntyre's got in mind. Oh, no. Apollo Crews reverse Alabama slam. Eats the canvas for Thanksgiving dinner. And back into the corner, looks like McIntyre's going to send Apollo Crews. And, oh, look at, look at that. He's going to the well again. Going to the well with what works. Crews, this time, eating a little bit of that Thanksgiving stuffing. Is he going for it again? McIntyre's putting Apollo Crews back into the corner. He's looking to knock Apollo Crews lights out for good. There he goes for a third time. Crews is going to be staring up at the lights here in the garden. Counting turkeys. It almost had an elimination there, but Sheamus breaking up the pinfall. I don't know, Celtic Warrior, if he didn't break that thing up, we may have had our first elimination. Wait a minute, Sheamus not getting out of the ring. McIntyre is going to force him out of the ring. Oh, no. McIntyre sending the team captain for a ride. But unfortunately turned this back into Apollo Crews back into this matchup. And Sheamus may be down, but the tag has been made to the Prince Finn Balor. And Balor, as we mentioned, unfortunately has been McIntyre's kryptonite over the last couple of months. McIntyre's down, the Prince is headed to the top rope. Beautiful splash after that double team maneuver moments ago from himself and Cruz. McIntyre kicking out. Sheamus back into the corner. We're back to an even playing field. 3v3 here at Survivor Series. And again, later tonight, we will see the hurt business. Cedric Alexander, Shelton Benjamin, and Bobby Lashley taking on the World Tag Team Champions, Dominic Dijakovic, Damian Priest, and the phenomenal AJ Styles. Another situation that's really been looming, not just over the past couple of months, but since April the 11th, backlash earlier this year. Now Pete Dunn, submission hold in there a little bit early in this contest. Bauer a little close to the ropes. Pete Dunn and Finn Bauer, as we mentioned, these two men have locked horns in recent months. And that matchup all the way back at Extreme Rules for the Intercontinental Championship. Bauer took the bruiser weight to the limit on that night, but it was Pete Dunne who walked away, the better man. I'm sure Finn Bauer would love to possibly eliminate Pete Dunne himself here tonight, really get a measure of revenge all these months later. Finn's got to take advantage while he's got the bruiser weight days, sending him into enemy territory. You see the punishment of this kind of matchup really starting to take its toll on Pete Dunne. You're not just strategizing for one, you're strategizing for a whole team of different competitors. Really, all six men in this really bring a different style and a different energy into this contest here tonight. And Apollo Crews utilizing one of his strengths, that being his strength himself. And now the tag made to Sheamus. And remember earlier, Sheamus really did a number on Pete Dunne that tagged out right away as if he didn't want to be in there with Pete Dunne. But now convenient, tags back in when Pete Dunne is already down and out. Sheamus was taken to the limit by Pete Dunne inside of that steel cage. Remember, Sheamus might have walked away with the victory, but it was not without a few battle scars along the way. A crimson mask pouring down the forehead of Sheamus. And again, it took not one, not two, but three bro kicks. And wait a minute. I was about to talk about Sheamus defeating Pete Dunne a number of weeks ago, but the Celtic Warrior taking McIntyre and Nakamura off the apron. A little bit unnecessary there if you ask me. He better been off paying attention because now Pete Dunne is in the driver's seat of this contest and looking to dislocate the arm of Sheamus. Goes behind on the Celtic Warrior. What does the Bruiserweight got in mind here? Back in enemy territory. Oh, and what an over a hand chop. Pete Dunne, one of the hardest hitters the WWE has to offer. He'll pick your body apart limb by limb, shot for shot. And Sheamus wants none of that here. He takes him out with that basement drop kick. Pete Dunne's been in here for a number of moments. Might be smart to tag out if he can. Get that 
At least get that chance here. Sheamus right now is trying to make sure that Pete Dunne may be the first casualty of this elimination matchup. Dunne's looking worse for wear, trying to fight back. Nice and Seguri to Sheamus. And Pete Dunne smart to tag out. And here comes Drew McIntyre. Team captain versus team captain. Wait a minute, McIntyre immediately. Future Shock DDT on the Celtic Warrior. And we may be looking at our first elimination here, but Apollo Crews is in there to break things up. And McIntyre hits Apollo Crews with a Claymore. That Scottish SOB is fired up here tonight. Pete Dunne taking care of Apollo Crews. McIntyre's got Sheamus absolutely down and out right now. Oh no. And the Scottish psychopath headed to the top rope, dropping a behemoth elbow. And into the cover, right to the heart. And that may be all she wrote. We have your first casualty. The Celtic Warrior, the team captain, is gone from this Survivor Series elimination matchup. And that has got to throw off the whole game plan for Apollo Crews and Finn Balor. Apollo Crews strikes with that pump kick. May have just... Called McIntyre off guard, but McIntyre still in this. You gotta imagine that is a shock, a little bit of a surprise here. The team captain, Sheamus, the first one to fall in this elimination matchup, thanks to the opposing team captain, excuse me, Drew McIntyre. Man, what a matchup this has already been. What a night this has already been here at the TD Garden in Boston. Thanksgiving 2022, gonna go down in the record books for the Survivor Series pay-per-view. McIntyre got Apollo Crews. You notice he's keeping him in his team's corner right now. Gonna tag in the King of Strong Style, Nakamura, your legal man, against Apollo Crews. We're gonna do one good for his friend, Rick Boots. Man, I cannot believe Sheamus is out of here, man. Drew McIntyre got tagged in, immediately hit that future shock DDT, a claymore to Apollo Crews, followed it up with that ginormous elbow drop. What's McIntyre, 260, 265? Upwards around there, McIntyre is no small man. He came crushing Sheamus' heart from the top rope. And Sheamus, the team captain, the first one to be eliminated in this matchup. But right now, Nakamura is doing a number on Apollo Crews. He can't eliminate him out there, but he can certainly do a number of damage. And things, of course, two to three right now. So the odds in Team Drew McIntyre's favor, Apollo Crews smart. Going to head to his corner and tag in the fresher man, the Prince Finn Balor. And Nakamura once again going to be chomping at the bit, but Finn Balor coming out strong with that swing blade. The team, I guess we'll, we'll say Team Finn Balor right now, or Team Apollo Crews, whoever wants to take the ranks of the captain, if they even discussed that prior. The strategy's got to change, and for right now, they got to even things up. Sheamus is gone. Balor looking to take advantage here. Got Nakamura in the air. Delayed suplex, and Nakamura's going to be feeling that one on Black Friday morning. Balor grabbing a hold, takes Jinsuke Nakamura over, goes over, but Nakamura gets out of the way. And you see how quick the momentum can change in this matchup, especially when you're fighting from behind like Apollo Crews and Finn Balor are. Nakamura gonna tag in the Bruiserweight, Pete Dunne looking to get some fresh likes in this contest. I'm sure Team Drew McIntyre happy with the strategy so far and looking to keep it going on Finn Balor right now, but Balor goes behind, comes down with a DDT on Pete Dunne. Not what McIntyre and Nakamura want to see in this matchup right now. Going to send Pete Dunne into the opposing corner. Again, it's about tying things up for Balor and Cruz right now. It's now or never to try to have a fighting chance in this matchup. Pete Dunne is down. Balor eyeing up the bruiser weight. Could be looking to wrap things up for Pete Dunne's night, but Pete Dunne has got another plan. On a nice shot. Finn Balor may be in trouble. Gets sent inside out for the bruiserweight. Pete Dunne elects not to go for the cover just yet. He's got something else in mind. More damage to be done. More retribution to be seeked in this matchup. 
And a tag made to Shinsuke Nakamura. He might want to let Nakamura pick the bones of the Prince here tonight. Nakamura in off the double team. Nakamura looking to win back that loss from last night on main event. Oh, now we got a tag. The Scott is psycho path through McIntyre. He's also got a bone to pick with Finn Balor after those losses over the last number of months. McIntyre looking for the cover there. Balor had a few moments to rest, able to kick out, but Drew McIntyre, the fresher of the two in this matchup, has got Finn Balor up and a power bomb may as well have been straight to hell. And you see Team Drew McIntyre keeping the fresh likes in this contest. Tag made to Shinsuke Nakamura. And now Nakamura looking to unload. You're speaking of fresh legs. He's using them to his advantage with these kicks. Unloading on the Prince and... One more to the noggin. Shinsuke into the cover on Finn Balor. Got to watch Apollo Crews there. Crews going to save this matchup at least for another moment. That's going to be Apollo Crews and Finn Balor's only chance really at this current moment is to watch each other's backs and just to try to even things up in the Survivor Series six-man elimination matchup here tonight. Balor just unloading on Nakamura right now. Nakamura, nice counter. Nice kick. Finn Balor's got to be feeling the effects of all the damage Shinsuke did just a few moments ago. On the shoulders, Death Valley driver here. Sits down with it, and Balor's got to be down and out. And a tag made to Drew McIntyre. And Drew goes for the cover again on Finn Balor. Will that be enough to keep the Prince away and eliminate him in this contest? Apollo Crews breaks things up again. Can't even imagine what's going through Sheamus' mind right now, being the first to be eliminated in this matchup. Definitely had to throw off the whole strategic plan. For the Celtic Warrior and his, oh, unit here tonight. McIntyre just got set right off the apron. Pete Dunn's down there with Apollo Crews right now. We're down to Nakamura and Finn Balor alone inside of the ring. And Nakamura dropping Balor right on the back of his neck. Oh, no. Shinsuke eyeing up the Prince. Knee to face may have been a knockout maneuver. And is that going to do it for Finn Balor's night? Hit the showers. It's 3-1. to one. And Apollo Crews, I don't even know if Pete Dunn knows the result of what just happened. He's got Apollo Crews on the outside. And Crews better be counting his luck right now. Three to one, not looking so good for Team Sheamus here tonight. Either that or this is going to be a miraculous night in the career of Apollo Crews if he can somehow fight back in this three to one disadvantage. But I don't know, Nakamura, Pete Dunn and Drew McIntyre looking well in the strong suit right now. Oh, what a clothesline by Apollo Crews. And a tag made to Drew McIntyre. Apollo McIntyre. Who's going to be the last man standing in this matchup? Crews unloaded on Drew right now. For a little bit of everything that he's got left in the tank. As we're in deep waters in this six-man elimination contest as McIntyre muscles up Cruz and hangs him up on the top rope. McIntyre knocked out Commander Aziz on Monday Night Raw. Could be looking to do the same to Apollo Cruz here tonight at Survivor Series. Oh, nice and superb. Apollo Cruz going to try to fight, but I think he probably knows deep down this is a monstrous uphill battle, especially looking at the kind of guys you got opposing you on the other side of the ring. Cruz going for the cover. On Drew McIntyre here. McIntyre gets the shoulder up. Oh, and Apollo Cruz better watch his back. Send the Pete Dunn to the outside. Turned his back on the wrong guy. McIntyre hooking the arms. Future shock DDT. McIntyre pulling a weightless carcass away from the ropes into the cover. A clean sweep for Drew McIntyre and company here tonight. An impressive performance out of Shinsuke Nakamura, Pete Dunne, and your team captain Drew McIntyre laying it all on the line. Outlasting Sheamus, outlasting Finn Balor, outlasting Apollo Crews. And we have not only your sole survivors, but your winners here tonight here in Boston. Are your winners, Shinsuke Nakamura, the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne, and Drew McIntyre.
Retribution was on the mind of these three men, and they are walking away at Thanksgiving 2022 with exactly that, an impressive victory by Drew McIntyre and his team. Your second championship match here this evening, the Inner Continental Championship is on the line here at Survivor Series. And a man who has held the Intercontinental Championship on multiple occasions in his career, looking to win back the gold yet again here tonight. And the show off Dolph Ziggler earned this opportunity to become the number one contender a number of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, part of a fatal five-way elimination matchup. Things came down to Dolph Ziggler and Mustafa Ali. As you see here, Dolph Ziggler, super kick, knocked Ali's lights out. A one, two, three, had Dolph Ziggler on the way to here tonight. The TD Yard in Boston, Massachusetts could be the home of yet another run with the Intercontinental Championship for Dolph Ziggler. It will not come with an easy opponent on the other end of the ring. The current Intercontinental Champion, the Blackheart, Tommaso Ciampa, who owns a victory over Dolph Ziggler in recent history. He has been dominant ever since showing up from NXT and joining the main roster. And I'm sure that win over Dolph Ziggler has been looming in the mind of the show off ever since, but especially in the lead up to Survivor Series. The champion looks cold and calculated as always here tonight. And we talked about it earlier tonight in the midst of our Cruiserweight Championship matchup. But just 24 hours ago on main event, this man, Tommaso Ciampa, as well as Roderick Strong, defeated Ricochet and Dolph Ziggler in a tag team matchup. And Dolph Ziggler, unfortunately, eating the pin in that contest. So you got to wonder what the mental state is of the show off here tonight. He can't let that loss just 24 hours ago affect his game plan against the Blackheart Tommaso Ciampa. Or we know Ciampa, how dangerous he can be inside of that ring. He will pick apart Dolph Ziggler if he allows him to here tonight. But that goal that Tommaso Ciampa grasps so tightly. Dolph Ziggler has held multiple times in his career. If anything, it is a title that has become synonymous throughout Dolph Ziggler's career. And the show off wants another crack to hold gold yet again here in the WWE. But will it be at Tommaso Ciampa's expense? Ciampa knows he can beat Dolph Ziggler. He's done it before in the lead up to Judgment Day, which was the night Ciampa walked away with the Intercontinental Championship. Can he do it again or will tonight, Thanksgiving 2022, will luck be striking for the show off here tonight in Boston? We are gonna find out right now. The stage is set, the time is right now. Let's send things down to the ring for your introductions. Introducing the challenger from Hollywood, Florida, weighing in at 218 pounds, Dolph Ziggler. And introducing the champion, from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, weighing in at 201 pounds. He is the WWE Intercontinental Champion, Tommaso Ciampa! You may not like Tommaso Ciampa. You may think he's a cold-hearted son of a bitch because quite frankly, he is. But there's one thing you can't take away from that man, and that's the brutality that he brings each and every time he steps foot inside of the squared circle. Champa is one tough competitor. The reason he is the Intercontinental Champion right now. Will Dolph Ziggler be able to pull off this victory and dethrone Champa, handing him his first loss since arriving to the main roster? We are going to find out right here, but Champa immediately unloading on Ziggler. Will that be a knockout blow? And oh man. Close call for the show off immediately after the bell sounded. Dolph Ziggler cannot allow that from the champ Tommaso Ciampa. This is going to be a short night for the Blackheart. Ciampa taking things to the outside already. Ever since arriving to the main roster, Ciampa owns victories over Dolph Ziggler, as we mentioned. 
Victory over Ilya Dragunov. Victory over Pete Dunne. And of course, as we mentioned 24 hours ago, in that tag team matchup, Champion Strong defeating Ziggler and Ricochet. Champ also owns a victory over Dominic Mysterio as well. Champ has been undefeated since showing up to Monday Night Raw from NXT. He had an impressive run in NXT, former multiple time NXT Tag Team Champion, former NXT World Champion. Champa was the face of that brand and already since arriving to Monday Night Raw has become one of the faces of Monday Nights as well. But right now, Ziggler's looking to rearrange the mug of Tommaso Champa in the corner. This is what Dolph Ziggler's got to do. He's got to throw Champ off his game. He's got to build momentum. The crowd here in Boston tonight got to be behind the show off. Ziggler's got to use it to his advantage. Dolph Ziggler again. Oh, man, another knockout blow with that knee. Oh, but Ziggler right there. Nice drop toe hold. Ziggler's trying to avoid that hard hitting. Offense from the Intercontinental Champion. Remember, as we mentioned, Dolph Ziggler survived and was the last man standing in a five-man elimination matchup a number of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. Dolph Ziggler defeated Rey Mysterio, Finn Balor, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Mustafa Ali to become the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship on that night. Absolutely earning his right to be under the bright lights here on pay-per-view Thanksgiving 2022. We want to thank you all again for joining us so far here this evening. We still got a great night of action lined up including the Hell in the Cell match for the WWE Championship. Randy Orton versus Edge for the final time ever in their careers. Going to go one-on-one -on -one in the most prestigious prize in the business today. And Ziggler headed to the top of Tommaso Ciampa. They're going to make sure Ziggler can't mount the offense that he had in mind. Tommaso Ciampa this is just about continuing his momentum, continuing on with this Intercontinental Championship run. Dolph Ziggler, remember, he took a few months off, was down in NXT, became the NXT champion while he was down there. The return to Monday Night Raw on the Raw after SummerSlam back in June. And for the most part, has seen success. A few losses in between. The biggest one, obviously, as we mentioned, being to Tommaso Ciampa, but Ziggler has had a steady climb back to the top of the mountain and is looking to really establish himself yet again, even at this late part in his career. It really feels like every time Dolph Ziggler tries to mount some momentum in this contest, Tommaso Ciampa is right there to cut him off. Really not allowing Dolph Ziggler to bring his best right now. And Ciampa's looking to take, take things to the top rope. Superplex, down goes the show off. To the disapproval of the crowd here in Boston, but I don't think Ciampa gives a damn. Into the cover, and not enough just yet to keep Dolph Ziggler down. We know how tough Dolph Ziggler is, the heart and soul of the WWE. One of the heart and souls of WWE for many years. Dolph's had a decorated career and forget what we were about to say because that may have been a knockout blow. Super kick, but Tommaso Ciampa gets his shoulder up at the last second. Out of nowhere, Dolph struck with that super kick, the same kick that earned himself the number one contendership for this matchup. Dolph Ziggler almost adding another Intercontinental Championship reign to his already decorated career that we are about to focus on. Ziggler has been IC Champion, has been United States Champion, Tag Team Champion, Mr. Money in the Bank, World Heavyweight Champion. Dolph Ziggler's done a lot in his illustrious career here in the WWE, but he ain't slowing down anytime soon. Was moments away from defeating Tommaso Ciampa there, but Ziggler ain't giving up, ain't going down without a fight. Missing for that basement drop kick. Champa avoiding it at the very last second. Now let's see what the Intercontinental Champion's gonna throw. Went for a drop kick of his own, but Ziggler had that scouted. And a nice swinging neck breaker, simple but effective on Tommaso Champa. And interesting to know here, Champa's had a history of neck problems. So that swinging neck breaker definitely gonna do some damage to Tommaso Champa. And you see there, Champa went for that discus lariat. Little thrown off, miscalculated it. And that may have been the result of some of that offense from Dolph Ziggler. Oh no, the Intercontinental Chance in trouble. Dolph Ziggler's tuning up the ban. Went for the super kick, but Ciampa ducks in a big boot from the Intercontinental Champion. And Ciampa better be counting his lucky stars that he got out of the way right there. And now he sends Dolph Ziggler into the mat. We were moments away from another knockout, I believe. And now Ciampa with the kick. Could be going. Oh no. Oh, down on the knees. 
And that is gonna do it. Champ into the cover. And no, Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler gets the shoulder up. Don't knock Dolph Ziggler. Do not count that man out. Champa pulling out some of his best moves in his arsenal, but Dolph Ziggler lives to survive another moment here tonight in Survivor Series. Whips him off into the corner, and Ziggler, the punishment, starting to reap its toll in this matchup. Dolph is down, and is still fighting, still fighting, is Dolph Ziggler. Lefts and rights. Anything he can throw at Tommaso Ciampa. Super kick number two, he hits it. No, Ciampa counts up. And a knee. Oh man, Dolph Ziggler may have just missed a window of opportunity there. Ciampa just absorbed the super kick. Very tail ending. Into the cover he goes. And the Intercontinental Championship remains with the black heart of the WWE. What a fight from bell to bell. Got to give credit where it's due. Dolph Ziggler threw all he had at Tommaso Ciampa. There was the first super kick, which we thought would have, might have knocked out Tommaso Ciampa. Oh, right there. What a really page-turning moment in this matchup. Dolph Ziggler's eating that offense right to the back. Ziggler was able to hit another super kick, but unfortunately for Tommaso Ciampa, there you see it. Bounced right back up, absorbed the blow. And still, the WWE Intercontinental Champion, Tommaso Ciampa! And was able to hit that fairy tale ending. And it's a fairy tale ending for no other man but Tommaso Ciampa here tonight. The Intercontinental Championship remains in the cold hearted grasp of the black heart of the WWE. Like it or not, Champ is one of the toughest son of a bitches walking this planet today, and he proves it yet again here tonight in Boston. Dolph Ziggler falls to Champa, but the question remains who's going to be next to step up to the Intercontinental Champion and have a run at the gold. Well, it is time to culminate the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament. We started with eight teams. We are down to the final two. And those two women are going to be walking away holding the gold here tonight. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. It is for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. Introducing first... From Tokyo, Japan, Io Shirai! Well, here's how the bracket has played out over the last month and change. We started with damage control, moving on to the semifinals to meet Io Shirai and Zia Lee, who of course won and made their way to tonight here at Survivor Series. On the other hand, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell defeated Alexa Bliss and Liv Morgan, as well as Naomi and Sasha Banks to punch their ticket to Survivor Series here tonight. Io Shirai, no stranger to holding gold here in the WWE. She is a former NXT Women's Champion as well as a former NXT Women's Tag Team Champion. But tonight, will Io Shirai add to that list of accolades, this time with Zia Lee by her side? And will these two women be walking out the brand new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions? Or will it be their opposers? Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell of the way. We're going to find out in moments as Io Shirai's tag team partner, the always impressive Zia Lee, makes her way down the aisle here tonight at the TD Garden in Boston. And her partner from Chongqing, China, Zia Lee. We've talked about it every time they've stepped foot in the squared circle throughout this tournament thus far. Io Shirai and Zia Lee, a perfect pairing of striking strong style abilities inside of that ring, also with the abilities to take it to the air. Io Shirai, sometimes known as the queen of the sky, and Zia Lee on the other hand, a lethal striker inside of that ring. We've seen her use those impressive legs and strikes to her advantage throughout this tournament thus far. But will this lethal combination be enough to take down Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell? Io Shirai and Zia Lee came together in this tournament. But their opposers, The Way, have been teaming for quite a while here in the WWE, including a stint down in NXT, where they were former NXT Women's Tag Team Champions. 
And here comes the two women that defeated, as we mentioned, Alexa Bliss and Liv Morgan in the first round. Naomi and Sasha Banks in the second round. And now they're coming to try to hold the gold here tonight again. You know, what a night it has been at Survivor Series thus far. Halfway during the event already. And still to come, the Women's Championship of the WWE to be defended as Shotzi goes one-on-one -on -one with the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. What a matchup that's going to be later tonight. As well as the WWE Championship going to be defended inside Hell in the Cell in your main event. It's been an awesome Thanksgiving night thus far. We want to thank you yet again for joining us here tonight on the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel for the Survivor Series pay-per-view as we are set for your WWE Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament Finals. Indy Hartwell, Candice LeRae representing The Way versus Zia Lee and Io Shirai. This is going to be a one hell of a tag team matchup. Io Shirai with a lot of history with the woman on the right there, Candice LeRae, including... A matchup a number of weeks ago on main event, which saw Candice LeRae defeat Io Shirai. One-on-one -on -one inside of the middle of that ring. But tonight it is 2v2 tag team action. And those white and gold straps are on the line. Who is leaving the TD Garden on Thanksgiving 2022? The new Women's Tag Team Champions of the WWE. And we're going to kick things off with Indy Hartwell of the way. And Io Shirai representing her side of the team here. In this Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament Finals. As we mentioned, everybody at home just saw the bracket. We started with eight teams. It's been a one hell of a tournament thus far. We're at the first round of the semifinals. All 16 women really giving it their all from bell to bell, but only the strongest will survive. And that leads us here tonight at Survivor Series, which sees Io Sarai heading to the top rope, where she's most comfortable early, dropping a picture-perfect Shawn Michaels-esque elbow. And that could be enough to keep India Hartwell down there. Not enough just yet. As we mentioned, Io Shirai and Zia Lee really bring a great one-two punch to the ring of strikes and ability there. Io Shirai knows how to take it to the air, but just like that, as you saw, that spinning heel kick could be a knockout blow on any day of the week if you hit it in the right spot. India Hartwell in trouble right now. The newcomer to the main roster who met Io Shirai in one-on-one -on -one action as well. It's really started the pairing of Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae when Candice LeRae returned from injury a number of months ago. There's all that history and past issues with Io Shirai, so it's only fitting that it all culminates here tonight at Survivor Series. Io looking good thus far, going to look to tag in. Zia Lee going to make her first appearance here at the TD Garden in Boston, and a tag made to Candice LeRae. And one-on-one, -on -one, fresh pair of legs for both teams. Let's see who's going to survive and walk out the women's tag team champions here tonight. Candice LeRae, I mean, all women, all four of these women in this matchup, we know how tough they are. We know how much heart and soul they have. But look at Candice LeRae's track record in the WWE, in NXT, outside of the WWE. One of the toughest women's wrestlers of all time. You can absolutely make that argument. So Candice LeRae going to be a tough woman to keep down. In this matchup, it's Zia Lee looking to do just that. Picture perfect DDT. A simple but effective maneuver from Zia Lee here. She goes to the top springboard, miscalculates it there as Candice LeRae gets out of the way. But there, yet again, Zia Lee and Ia Shirai putting their abilities to the test right now. And a tag made to ED Hartwell. And another double team, by the way. And that's definitely going to be, and already has been throughout this tournament, the strong suit of Candice and Io, or excuse me, of Candice and Indy, as their history teaming up as tag team partners, real life friends outside of this ring. As we mentioned, former NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, a lot of reps inside of that ring, and a lot of the teams in this tournament really come together for the first time. So, you know, that has really aided the way throughout the first round, throughout the semis, and possibly here tonight's Survivor Series. You gotta wonder, we are crowning Women's Tag Team Champions tonight, but you gotta wonder, Whoever walks out of this as the champions, who's going to be there to step up to try to win the Women's Tag Team Championships next to become the number one contenders? We will tell in due time here in the WWE. And, of course, coming up with the next episode of Universe Mode, we're going to touch more about it later tonight and on Monday Night Raw. But the next episode of Universe Mode, the WWE Draft, a lot of interesting situations going to be going on there. So can't wait to see what the future holds. Not only in the WWE, but specifically in the women's division. Io Shirai tagged in. We get Io and Candice one-on-one for the first time in this matchup. And Io Shirai coming out strong here. 
A lot of history between these two women in NXT. And as we mentioned recently on the main roster just prior to the tag team tournament kicking off. Now their roads meet again here tonight in Survivor Series. Io taking down Candice, working over the knee. Beautiful maneuver there. Shirai into the cover, and Candice LeRae gets the shoulder up. Two women, as we mentioned, no stranger to holding championship gold here in the WWE and in NXT. Who is going to add to their list of accolades here tonight? And Io trying to bring Candice into a posing corner, but Candice trying to make sure that she does not find herself in a precarious situation and a beautiful drop kick there. Simple but effective mover and take Io off her feet. Tag Zia Lee in. Candice goes for the clothesline. Zia with the counter. And now shoots Candice LeRae over the top rope, and bodies are going flying everywhere here in the garden. Zaya looking good, better stay on the offense, but Candice LeRae takes advantage while she's on the outside of the ring and just laid out Io Shirai. And that is not good for Zaya Lee and her chances in this matchup. As long as Io Shirai's down, she's got a handicap match at the current moment, but luckily Io Shirai battling her way back to the apron, and Zaya Lee is in control of this tag team championship match right now. Vacant titles, who is going to walk out? The women's tag team champions as Io is tagged in by Zaya. See what Io Shirai is going to bring to the table. Candice LeRae's been in here for a few minutes now. Might be smart to tag out to the fresh legs of Indy Hartwell when and if she gets the chance. But Io Shirai, as we mentioned, the queen of the sky, loves to take it to the air. She's got Candice LeRae up top, but I think we know what's coming. Grab it a hold. Spanish fly for the top rope. And that is enough to keep any woman down, no matter how tough you are. Boston's loving this... Matchup right now, and it was so close, so close. Io Shirai was from taking home the Tag Team Championships with Zia Lee. And Indy Hartwell, referee's got to get her out of the ring right now. Beautiful maneuver by Io Shirai. Boston came unglued, but not enough just yet to keep the way down. Tag made to Zia Lee. Candice LeRae going to make the much-needed tag to Indy Hartwell. And Indy coming out. Obviously the biggest competitor in this matchup, quite possibly the strongest competitor in this matchup as well, using her size to her advantage there to just level Zia Lee, knock her lights out momentarily, and now drops the elbow. Now Indy Hartwell go to the top rope. We've seen her do this before. She loves to take it to the air as well. She drops an elbow herself on Zia Lee from the top into the cover. The way's going home with the gold, not just yet. Championships remain vacant for another moment. Shoot Zia Lee into enemy territory. Tag back to Candice LeRae. Not sure how smart that is. Candice was in for a few minutes. She's got to be weary, but a little double team offense from the way. Candice going for the double stomp. Zaya getting her wits about her, trying to take Candice LeRae out. Candice dodges. Zaya dodges. Back and forth we go. Nice strike there. And a drop kick finally takes Zia Lee off her feet. And now Candice LeRae get a head up top. A lot of high flying in this matchup from all these women. And a splash. May have just getting the final nail in the coffin. Not just yet as Zia Lee again gets the shoulder off the canvas. Impressive performance from both these teams here tonight. And wait a minute, Candice LeRae tying up Zia Lee. I think we may know what's coming here. There's the boot face plant in the middle of the ring. Vintage Candice LeRae, and that may be all she wrote for the Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament, and it is! We have new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions here tonight at Survivor Series. The culmination of 16 women, 8 teams battling it out over the last month on Monday Night Raw and main event leads to this road here tonight. Io Shirai and Zia Lee putting up one hell of a fight throwing caution in the wind on numerous occasions, but in the end, Candice LeRae, Indy Hartwell, the team with the most experienced tag team in that ring, are walking away with the white and gold straps here tonight. Here are your winners and the new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. A great tag team matchup to culminate what has been an awesome tournament for the Women's Tag Team Championships. The culmination here tonight 
at the TD Garden in Boston. The question lies, who is going to be the first team to step up to the brand new women's tag team champions, the way reign supreme. Well, coming up on the next episode of Universe Mode is the long-awaited WWE Draft. Friday Night SmackDown is coming back on the air, and the roster is going to be split between Monday Night and Friday Night. A lot of information that's going to be run down at the top of Monday Night Raw in the next episode of Universe Mode, but the landscape of WWE is going to change this coming Monday Night on Raw. But coming up next here at Survivor Series, it is the rubber match. Austin Theory, John Cena. This thing has been building since SummerSlam back in June. It's one win apiece thus far in the rivalry. But tonight, it's not about getting the pinfall, not about getting the submission. It's about who is going to be the last man standing. Don't want to test your luck with me. I think I've had enough. And here comes competitor number one, the young, brash, cocky, and arrogant future of the WWE, former WWE champion of the world, all day, Austin Theory. Will Theory be the last man standing in Cena's hometown? The following contest is a last man standing match. Making his way to the ring, from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds, Austin Theory. It was back on June 26th of this year at SummerSlam where Austin Theory called John Cena back to the WWE to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. Cena upset Austin Theory on that night, which sent Austin Theory looming for answers. He wanted retribution on John Cena, which led to match number two, 24 hours after Austin Theory had walked away from Extreme Rules in that five-man elimination challenge for the WWE Championship. On that night, Austin Theory defeated John Cena to retain the gold. Cena took a couple of months off, made his way back to the WWE on the Raw after Judgment Day. After all the issues between these two men, attacks back and forth over the last number of months, it's time to settle the score once and for all. And his opponent from West Newberry, Massachusetts, weighing in at 251 pounds, John Cena! It was in this very arena in the year 2008 where John Cena returned from a neck injury right here to his hometown to win the World Heavyweight Championship. All these years later, Survivor Series emanates from the garden once again, and John Cena is back home this time with revenge on his mind. Austin Theory, that night that John Cena returned to the WWE a number of weeks ago, stuck his nose in the business of the franchise, costing him a match against Randy Orton. John Cena knew it was time to settle the score. Last man standing was made official. And then you remember, just a few weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, John Cena put Austin Theory through the announce table here at ringside with an attitude adjustment, sending a message for this last man standing match here tonight. A lot of bad blood between the future and the franchise. They are split one win apiece, but as we mentioned, it's not about pinfalls. It's not about submission. It's about beating your opponent senseless to the point where they cannot answer the referee's count of 10. And we may be in Cena's hometown, but just as it always is, the crowd split hot and heavy here tonight in Boston for this last man standing grudge match. Cena immediately taking Theory over. Remember Theory this past Monday night on Raw, defeating Shinsuke Nakamura one-on-one -on -one action week prior to defeating Mansoor one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, as we mentioned, it was after that matchup where John Cena hit the ring, put Austin Theory through the announce table. And right after that is when the last man standing match was made official for tonight. This feud between these two men has gone past just a wrestling matchup. It's time to fight. And that's what we're seeing right now tonight at Survivor Series. You know, for John Cena, he came back at SummerSlam thinking he was coming back just to test Austin Theory. He won the match on that night. Really gave Austin Theory some respect and was ready to move on, but it was Austin Theory he couldn't live with that loss. And the two men crossed past in that five-man elimination challenge back in Extreme Rules, which Austin Theory 
outlasted four others and walked away, the WWE Champion did the young man. There he went on to hold the gold for about a month until losing it back to Edge at Judgment Day. And it was 24 hours later on Monday Night Raw where John Cena took on Randy Orton and Austin Theory. That did not sit right with Theory. That Cena was just trying to walk back in as if Austin Theory never tried to put him away to begin with. Because remember the first and only successful defense in the reign of Austin Theory's WWE title reign came on the Raw after Extreme Rules where Theory defeated John Cena one-on-one. -on -one. And Theory early on may have just put John Cena down in this last man standing matchup. Theory is coming out strong here. Oh, and down goes Cena again. Austin Theory is trying to put this match away early. He does not want John Cena to get into deep waters in this contest. This is Austin Theory's first last man standing match tonight. And for John Cena, he's been down this road before. He knows what it takes to withstand the punishment and get back up and keep fighting. Austin Theory is trying to avoid that and have this match end as soon as possible. Down goes Cena, down to the floor, here at the TD Garden in Boston. And Austin Theory gonna take a moment to soak it all in here in John Cena's backyard tonight. And Theory going after Cena, but you gotta watch John Cena. Can't take your eye off the ball. And there's Cena there, throwing Austin Theory to the steel steps. As we mentioned, it's been two wrestling matches thus far, split one apiece, but tonight, these issues have escalated further then collar and elbow tie-ups and headlocks. And Cena sending Austin Theory to the barricade as the Boston is unloading right now for the franchise player. You like John Cena or not, he's gonna give it his all every time he steps foot, in the, steps foot inside the squared circle, even at this point in his career. And Austin Theory, he may have already held the WWE Championship, but he still has a long, long career ahead of him. Still some call him the future of the WWE. He doesn't care if he's the future, if he's the past or the present. He just wants to shut Austin Theory up and get him out of his way once and for all. Oh, and what a right hand by the franchise player as the brawl has ensued here at ringside. And obviously, the referee out there with Austin Theory and John Cena, no count outs in this matchup, just like there's no pinfall submissions or disqualifications. We've already seen the referee put the count on John Cena a couple of times thus far. A little too early to put somebody at John Cena's caliber away. And look at Cena taking the fight to Theory on the outside of the ring. And oh no, Cena taking apart the announce table. And you remember what we said earlier. Cena with the attitude adjustment to Austin Theory just two weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. Sending Austin Theory crashing through the table. Cena may be looking to repeat history here tonight. Grabbing a hold of the young man and slamming his head off the table. Theory better wake up now or it's going to be too late as John Cena's really starting to build some momentum in this contest. Cena looking under the ring and he's grabbing that cold, hard steel chair. Oh, and Austin Theory trying to avoid it at all costs. Knows the damage that John Cena can do when he's fired up. Theory wants to avoid it and have this match play out his way. Cena down right now. Theory... Trying to get the referee to put the count on, but Theory's really got to focus on the punishment right now. It's too early for John Cena to stay down. This is what Theory's got to do, pick apart John Cena, whether it's inside of the ring, outside of the ring. No matter the cost, pick apart John Cena and make sure he cannot get up. But Cena right there still fighting, taking Austin Theory off his feet. The ref's going to put the count on Austin Theory, but I think Cena's got something else in mind. Headed up to the top rope. Uncharacteristic for the franchise player. Nice crossbody there. And Cena now. Gonna be looking for one of those signature maneuvers. The franchise hitting the ropes. A little five knuckle shuffle to Austin Theory. Cena is looking good here tonight at Survivor Series. And will that be enough to keep Austin Theory down and out in this last man standing matchup? Count of five. Oh, wait a minute, Cena, Cena's gonna break the count himself. Looks like he's got more punishment he wants to inflict on all day Austin Theory. You know, we failed to mention that this past Monday night on Raw, Austin Theory, wait a minute, Cena with a senton. You wanna talk about uncharacteristic? Cena coming off the apron, crashing 
right on the ribs of Austin Theory. And Theory better wake up now before it's too late, sending John Cena skull first into the ring post. We failed to mention that this past Monday on a roll, Austin Theory defeated Shinsuke Nakamura, but also John Cena in the main event defeated Bobby Lashley one-on-one. -on -one. So both men coming in hot off some wins this past week on Raw with a little bit of momentum in their corner. Oh, and I see they trying to fight back. This has been a brawl since the opening bell. Theory's down. I don't know what John Cena's got in mind. His wheels just may be turning right now. The spotlight is on the franchise as well as the future of the WWE here tonight. And a six. May have done enough to keep Boston Theory down. You ragged all your opponent around enough. I don't care who you are. The pain's going to start to inflict up. Now Cena looking under the ring yet again. Cena. Let's see what he's got. Oh, grabbing a little kendo stick here. Cena's got punishment in mind. Referee's at a count of four. But Cena's going to break it on a kendo stick to the rib cage. Trying to humble the young man. Oh, and he just broke it over the damn forehead of Austin Theory. Well, franchise is fired up here at Survivor Series. This is the rubber match tonight. Cena won match one. Austin Theory won match number two. But tonight, John Cena's trying to teach this young man a lesson. A lesson in respect here tonight in Boston. Count of eight. Austin Theory's in trouble. Able to get to his feet just in time there. And Cena going to send Theory back into the ring. Definitely some... Punishment definitely done for both these men, but Cena cracking Austin Theory over the forehead with that kendo stick, breaking it in half. Back out to the outside we go. Cena's been waiting on this matchup with Austin Theory for weeks. A lot of pent-up anger and aggression in the heart of the franchise here tonight. Now what's Cena got in mind? Picked apart that announce table earlier. Looked like he might have been heading towards it, but Austin Theory's got something else. Trying to avoid disaster here. And a German suplex right on the outside of the ring. A German's already going to do some damage. Now do it on the floor, which is only being protected by a thin padding. John Cena may be down and out for good. Cena able to hobble up. Theory is going back out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And the fight has broken out. Into the masses in the TD Garden. Austin Theory had seen a brawling into the audience here. Sold out here on Thanksgiving night in Boston. And Cena's just going to let these people get a bit of an up close and personal look at the beatdown of Austin Theory. Luthez running the concrete. And Cena's eyeing up. We got electrical boxes over there. Steel chairs. Usually a restricted area, but tonight Cena's going to make sure anything and everywhere is possible to beat the hell out of all day Austin Theory as he sends him right to the barricade. But Cena able to, or excuse me, Austin Theory is able to catch his steps there, but Cena's still taking him off his feet. Oh no. And Cena grabbing a steel chair, but that's if Austin Theory even wakes up. And Cena with the chair right to the knee of Austin Theory. Man, win, lose, or draw tonight. This is going to be a humbling experience that Austin Theory is going to look back on for ages. Theory avoiding disaster there. Cena a concrete, and Theory with a vicious forearm right to the jawline of Cena. Last man standing. We knew anything and everything was possible. And these two men taking the fight out to Boston right now. In theory, again, with a shot. Could have been a knockout shot to John Cena. And Austin Theory, he better keep his eye on John Cena. Cena getting to his feet. Cena, on the other hand, looks like he's got something in mind. Going to head back to ringside. Austin Theory becoming the chaser. Cena's just trying to go Theory in, but there's Theory with a shot. Cena fired up there with a forearm. Vicious by the franchise player. And oh no, 
Theory's dazed. Cena's got him in the predicament again. History repeats itself with the attitude adjustment. And Cena's not done. Cena's not done. Holy knockout shot to Austin Theory. The garden has come unglued. And history from Monday Night Raw has repeated itself here at Survivor Series. Attitude adjustment straight to hell through the announce table. Six. Referees at a count of six. Theory is knocked out cold. Eight. Count of eight. Nine. And John Cena is the last man standing. Got to give credit where it's due. What a fight from bell to bell. Austin Theory tried putting John Cena away with some of his best offense early, but in the end, AA with a solid knockout blow to finish. Here is your winner, John Cena! From June 26th to November the 24th, 2022, the story of Austin Theory versus John Cena has been told, and Cena ultimately becomes the last man standing here tonight at the TD Garden in his backyard of Boston, Massachusetts. The franchise defeats the future. Cena wins at Survivor Series. What a fight that Austin Theory ain't gonna forget for a long, long time. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the Raw Women's Championship. It is time for your next championship match here tonight at Survivor Series and the WWE Women's Championship of the World is up for grabs. This woman, Shotzi, her story has been well documented throughout this year. We have witnessed her get better and better week after week, match after match, opponent after opponent. Shotzi went one-on-one -on -one with the EST of WWE, Bianca Belair, back on June 26th at SummerSlam, where Shotzi knocked off Bianca in their third meeting to finally become the WWE Women's Champion. Unfortunately though, for the ballsy badass, Shotzi never even got the opportunity to hold the women's championship in her hands. When then women's money in the bank holder, the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, reared her head, cashed in the briefcase, and took advantage of a dazed and damaged Shotzi to ultimately leave Phoenix, Arizona, the WWE Women's Champion. We then moved on to Extreme Rules where Asuka defended the gold against Shotzi and Bianca Belair in a triple threat matchup. And again, unfortunately for Shotzi, Asuka tapping out Bianca on that night to retain the Women's Championship of the World. Shotzi has been scratching and clawing her way back to the number one contendership ever since, beating opponent after opponent. She defeated Saray a couple of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, where it was ultimately determined that Shotzi was at the front of the line and finally earned herself yet another opportunity to become the WWE Women's Champion. And now when it's Shotzi versus Asuka one-on-one, -on -one, both at 100%, will tonight finally be the ballsy badasses night to leave Boston with the WWE Women's Championship of the World. But business has just picked up because the oh-so-dominating champion, 151 days, into her reign has arrived here at the TD Garden. Bianca Belair, Shotzi, Casey Catanzaro, Liv Morgan, Alexa Bliss all have fallen in championship defenses to the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, and that's not including non-title matches such as Dodrop and Dakota Kai just 24 hours ago on main event. Asuka has been dominant ever since she wrapped the gold around her waist again. The last time Asuka took a loss, well that was just seven days prior to the SummerSlam pay-per-view when she was still holding the Money in the Bank briefcase. And who defeated her on that night? That would be the woman she opposes tonight, Shotzi. Shotzi knows she can beat Asuka, but can she do it? 
when the women's championships on the line, live on pay-per-view, on the biggest match quite possibly of her career. There's a whole lot of writing on this story. And Asuka is looking just to make Shotzi another footnote in this oh-so-dominating reign as the WWE Women's Champion. But for Shotzi, as we mentioned, she has scratched and clawed to the front of the line, and she is not looking to let this opportunity slip through her fingers yet again. The Women's Championship is on the line here at Survivor Series. Let's send things down to the ring for your official introductions. Introducing the challenger from Oakland, California, Shotzi! And introducing the champion from Osaka, Japan, the Raw Women's Champion, Asuka! The oh-so-intimidating presence, the oh-so-intimidating stare of the Empress of Tomorrow. As we mentioned, 151 days atop the women's division here in the WWE, taking on any and all comers, and most importantly, defeating any and all comers, has Asuka. But tonight, Shotzi at 100%. Is Asuka at 100%? She made pretty quick work of Dakota Kai last night on main event, but still, just 24 hours ago, competed inside of the ring. Will that play a factor into this matchup? Here we go, Asuka versus Shotzi one-on-one. -on -one. This is the matchup that Shotzi's been waiting for since June 26. When Asuka arrived right before Shotzi could hold the women's championship in her hands to cash in the women's Money in the Bank briefcase and ultimately send Shotzi's dream of being the champion right down the drain hole. Should be very interesting to see what the strategy of Shotzi is tonight. We know she can get the job done. As we mentioned, she has defeated Asuka in the past. And back at SummerSlam, it could have been Bianca Belair in Shotzi's situation. Either woman, most likely, would have got cashed in on by Asuka. But Shotzi pulled the win off that night in the bright lights on one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year, SummerSlam, and defeated, outlasted, the EST of WWE, Bianca Belair. We know Shotzi's got the tools to get it done. But at this stage, in Asuka's career, where she's been so dominant for 151 days as the women's champion, is Shotzi the right person to be able to topple the Empress? That is the question we're going to get answered here tonight. Shotzi, you see her just trying to survive, trying not to let Asuka really get momentum going in this matchup. Nice and Seguri, Shotzi going for the early cover. Probably knows she's not going to win it right there. But just trying to get in the head of the women's champion. Be very interesting to see what her strategy is. You see she's throwing a little bit of everything and then some with the Empress, which might be her ultimate strategy. She's trying to pick apart Asuka in any way she can. Shotzi going to the top rope. We know how comfortable she is up there. Nice splash into the cover yet again in this matchup. Goes the number one contender, but Asuka gets the shoulder up. Shotzi is coming out swinging from the opening bell. Leaving everything on the table. If Shotzi falls down tonight, it's not gonna be. They don't lose it. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, into the cover. Once again, but Asuka gets the shoulder up. If Shotzi goes down tonight, it's not going to be without throwing everything in the kitchen sink at the Empress of Tomorrow. And Asuka survived yet another pinfall there. Shotzi going for a couple of early covers. It makes you wonder whether she's just trying to get in the head of Asuka with some of those pinfalls or if she's really just trying to end this match early and doesn't want to get into deep waters with the Empress of Tomorrow. Remains to be seen, but Shotzi's got to keep up with this offense. Stick and move, hurt the champion if she can. Asuka's in a predicament right now. Shotzi's looking good in this women's championship matchup, but Asuka takes a tumble down to the floor in the garden. Asuka's down, Shotzi. Heading up to the apron. What's Shotzi got in mind? It's vintage senton! And those coffin drop sentons. Some of the best moves that Shotzi's got in her arsenal. She'll hit him from the top rope. She'll hit him on the mat. Anywhere possible to just have her body come crashing down on top of the opposer. And Shotzi is in firm control of this matchup right now. The women's champion, I don't want to say she's in trouble, but she is certainly not in the driver's seat of this women's championship matchup. Shotzi is feeling it here in Boston. 
And I think she knows she can't win the championship on a count out. Isn't expecting to. Asuka makes her way back into the ring. And Shotzi was there waiting for her. Probably smart. Allowed herself to rest for a minute. But Asuka's back in there. Sidestep Shotzi in a German suplex. Shotzi lands right on the back of her neck. This is where Shotzi's got to be in trouble here. Got to be careful as Asuka sends her over the top rope and the fight spills back to the outside of the ring. Let's see what Asuka's got in the arsenal waiting for Shotzi tonight. Wait a minute. Slamming her down on the floor. And this is where Shotzi's got to be careful here. Can't withstand a lot of this offense on the outside of the ring from Asuka. Can't really withstand much offense in general for Mosca, but especially outside of the squared circle. Asuka gonna head back out of the ring here. She can win this matchup and retain the gold via count out. Shotzi not gonna let that happen. Heading back out of the ring comes the number one contender, but Asuka's right there, waiting the win. And Shotzi's in trouble here. Look at Asuka. Look at the positioning on the suplex, hook the arm as well, and that's got Shotzi all tied up. Down to the canvas she goes. 151 days, a dominating reign for Asuka. We mentioned the talent that she has defeated. Casey Catanzaro, Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan, Bianca Belair, and Shotzi. That's just the championship defenses. She's been undefeated ever since winning the gold back at SummerSlam. Shotzi trying to get back into this fight right now. Double knees again, down goes Asuka. And Shotzi's got to pick a spot here. She's not look. Don't want to give Asuka too much time. And she may have done that. Hip attack to Shotzi. And Shotzi may have just cost herself. She didn't capitalize. Oh, wait a minute. Nice counter. Still got fighting her. Does the number one contender. Comes at her. Asuka with the... Knocks Shotzi off. Shotzi with the counter. And there, around she goes. Hurricane Rana sending Asuka tilt to whirl. Head scissors. Down she goes. And hits the senton. Signature maneuver out of the number one contender. And as she's heading to the top, she could be looking for yet another senton here. And she hits it. Coffin drop for the top rope. And Shotzi just secured the women's championship. Not just yet as Asuka gets the shoulder up. Shotzi throwing her best move in her arsenal at the Empress of Tomorrow. But Asuka's still living a fight another moment in this women's championship matchup. And this is where champions are made in these kind of situations right now. And Shotzi's in trouble. Yes, she may have awoken the beast as Asuka picking apart Shotzi in the corner. And now she's on the top rope and you do not want to mess with Asuka right now. She sends Shotzi damn near halfway across the ring and immediately goes to the cover. No waste in motion for the Empress. Shotzi gets the shoulder up, but Asuka that much closer to retaining the Women's Championship of the World. And now the ground and pound begins from Asuka. No rest for the weary. Right back to the offense. Goes the champion, but Shotzi's still fighting. A nice kick. Able to knock Asuka off her feet. Shotzi, oh wait a minute, schoolboy here. Into the cover she goes. Gonna steal the victory, but Asuka gets the shoulder up. Lot of near falls in this matchup, especially for Shotzi. Knocks Asuka off her feet. Sent on again. And Shotzi's going to the top rope. Let's see what she's gonna pull out here. Will it be a sent on or will it be an elbow drop? Mixing up the offense from the top. Making sure Asuka doesn't have the maneuver scouted, but Asuka's still in this matchup. Near fall after near fall with the women's world title on the line. And both women missing opportunities there, but Asuka locking the arms, German suplex again, dropping Shotzi on her head. Shotzi's taking a lot of spills in this contest. Trying to fight back in it is the number one contender. Drops an elbow again. A lot of high offense from the number one contender in this matchup. As we mentioned at the beginning of this thing, she's gonna throw anything and everything she has at the Women's World Champion of the WWE. But Asuka, back and forth, the momentum is going in this championship match, belly to belly. We have got a fight for the Women's Championship right now. Back and forth we go as now Asuka's in the driver's seat and Shotzi is in deep trouble. And Asuka's going to the top row. We don't see her go there too often and it does not pay her dividends 
Max he knocks her off, goes for the senton. Asuka moves out of the way. A counter again, and Siguri may have been a knockout blow. Senton to the lower back of the champion. And again she goes. A third time, but Asuka moves out of the way. Went to the well too many times with that senton. Did Shotzi? Oh no. A kick. We know what's going. Asuka with the hip attack for the second time of the match. Shotzi absorbs it. Oh man, we have got a fight back and forth. We go tilt to whirl again. Yeah. Women's champion goes down. Asuka's in trouble. Shotzi's headed to the top. Is this the moment she's been waiting her whole damn career for? Into the cover. Asuka has been dethroned. And the women's championship belongs to the ballsy badass of the WWE. What a damn fight for the women's championship. It is nights like tonight here at Survivor Series where history and champions are made. And Shotzi just proved her damn worth in this entire company tonight. Surviving everything Asuka had and is walking away the new women's champion. A hundred and fifty-one days in the making. Shotzi finally for the first time gets to hold the women's championship in her grasp. No women's money in the bank cash in coming. Shotzi survives the best of the best and she is now atop the women's division as the world champion here in the WWE. What a match at Survivor Series. Well, coming up on your next episode of Universe Mode, not only is it Monday Night Raw, not only is the WWE Draft, but it's going to be the host of a no-holds-barred grudge match between the Nigerian Giant, the Colossal Moss, and the original bro, Matt Riddle. And those issues stemming from issues we are about to settle in the Survivor Series six-man elimination matchup coming up next. The Hurt Business, Benjamin, Alexander, and Lashley versus the World Tag Team Champions Damian Priest, Dominic Dijakovic, and the phenomenal AJ Styles. The issues between Styles and Lashley date all the way back to backlash of this year, but it's finally time to settle the score here in Boston. And here come team number one. The contest is a six-man tag team match on the way to the ring. At a combined weight of 721 pounds, Bobby Lashley, Shelton Benjamin, and Cedric Alexander, the Hurt Business. That is one united force in Shelton Benjamin, a veteran of the ring, Cedric Alexander, a gifted competitor, and the almighty Bobby Lashley. Those three men are looking to cement their legacy here tonight. For Alexander and Benjamin, a possible chance to become the World Tag Team Champions in the near future hangs in the balance tonight. And for Bobby Lashley, it's about proving once and for all that he is more phenomenal than this man, Team Captain AJ Styles. Survivor Series has already been off the charts and things roll on right now. It was back at Judgment Day that AJ Styles and Bobby Lashley met in a long-awaited rematch. No championships in the line this time. Nothing more than bragging rights. Bobby Lashley waited in the light, waited in the midst, excuse me, for months to get retribution for AJ Styles for dethroning him as the WWE Champion back on April the 11th at Backlash of this year. And it was back at Judgment Day that not only did the two men put on an absolutely instant classic for the crowd there that night in Denver. But Bobby Lashley walked away with the victory over AJ Styles, and things could have ended there. But Lashley took matters into his own hands. A post-match attack to, to the phenomenal AJ Styles, excuse me, only escalated these, this situation even further. 
But AJ tonight has got himself a little bit of backup in the midst of the World Tag Team Champions. Two men who got a score to settle with the Hurt Business in their own right. Dominic Dijakovic and this man, the Archer, Damian Priest. And from New York, New York, weighing in at 249 pounds, one half of the World Tag Team Champions, Damian Priest. And as we've documented in the past, it's the Hurt Business and their really mentality towards the rest of the locker room that really brought Damian Priest and Dominic Dijakovic together as a tag team. Mutual respect was already there after a one-on-one -on -one contest dating back months ago on Monday Night Raw between the two men. But after a backstage altercation, Damian Priest and Dominic Dijakovic joined forces one Monday Night on Raw, and as they say for the rest of it, was history. Priest and Dijakovic defeated the Hurt Business. The issues continued, but Priest and Dijakovic went on to dethrone Dominic and Rey Mysterio of the World Tag Team Championships and an absolute tag team match of the year clinic at Judgment Day. It's a lot of history between all six of these men that's going to come to a head here tonight. And as we mentioned, Alexander and Benjamin, not only do they want the win, not only do they want the bragging rights, but I'm sure they would love an opportunity to dethrone these two men of the gold that is wrapped around their waist here tonight. It may not be on the line, but the opportunity always arises in Survivor Series elimination matchups. And from Kingsboro, Massachusetts, weighing in at 270 pounds, one half of the World Tag Team Champions, Dominic. Dominic Dijakovic's got his own personal score to settle with the almighty Bobby Lashley. Those two men went one-on-one -on -one a number of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. Lashley picked up the victory on that night. And obviously issues just seemingly settled, or excuse me, continue to stem from there. And of course it was this past Monday Night on Raw where Dominic Dijakovic and Damian Priest put the World Tag Team Championships on the line against the charismatic Enigma Jeff Hardy and the whole damn show, Rob Van Dam. A hell of a tag team match it was, but Priest and Dijakovic staying atop the tag team division as the world tag team champions. You gotta wonder what their condition is coming out of that awesome matchup on Raw. A lot of pressure and a lot of momentum riding out of that, but tonight it is about AJ Styles, Priest and Dijakovic versus the Hurt Business, and here we go! Styles and Lashley wasting no time kicking us off. Styles going for the quick elimination here. Gonna take more to take Bobby Lashley down and out, but I think Styles just trying to get in the head of the almighty Lashley. You know, a lot of what we have seen here tonight in Survivor Series, a lot of stories over the last couple of months coming to a head, a lot of rubber matches coming to a head. And for Styles and Lashley, it may not be one-on-one -on -one tonight, but you remember, AJ Styles defeated Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship back on April the 11th at Backlash. And it was back on September the 10th at Judgment Day where Bobby Lashley defeated AJ Styles one-on-one. -on -one. So now with partners in crime here tonight, who is going to get the last laugh and leave Boston with the bragging rights once and for all? Will Lashley prove that he is better than AJ Styles or is Styles going to get the revenge he's been waiting for since September the 10th? Shelton Benjamin in now, a veteran of the ring. Former Intercontinental United States Champion, multiple time tag team champion, one of those reigns, coming with Cedric Alexander. You remember back on Saturday night's main event, the night before Extreme Rules in August, Shelton Benjamin went one on one with Damian Priest that night, which is really the next chapter in the issues between Priest and Dijakovic in the Hurt Business. And Shelton Benjamin, due to the distraction by Cedric Alexander on multiple occasions in that matchup, was able to defeat Damian Priest. Just another chapter in the long story history between all six of these men throughout this year. It all comes to a head tonight. What a night it has been here on Thanksgiving 2022. TD Garden in Boston has been a great host to an amazing Survivor Series. And still to come, your main event, Edge, Randy Orton, inside hell in a cell for the WWE Championship. Damian Priest taking over Shelton Benjamin into the cover, not watching the ring awareness there. Benjamin's foot under the bottom rope. And for Priest and Dijakovic, you know, we mentioned Dijakovic's singles loss to Bobby Lashley a number of weeks ago on Raw, and it may have been a number of months ago now, but we mentioned the 
Singles loss from Damian Priest to Shelton Benjamin, and we talk about those because wins and losses matter around here. When it comes to momentum and championship opportunities, singles-wise, Priest and Dijakovic may not have been in the winning ways over the last number of months, but as a tag team, they've been damn near unstoppable. Damian Priest took his eyes off Shelton Benjamin to get a hands on Lashley there, and it may have cost him a Priest trying to bounce back. Let's see who's going to get the upper hand here. Priest whipping Benjamin off, sends him for a ride. Goes crashing down on the canvas. And as we mentioned, Damian Priest and Dominic Dajakovic hot off the heels of a successful, mind you, World Tag Team Championship defense on Monday Night Raw. And it's Mr. Monday Night himself, RVD, and of course, Jeff Hardy. What a match it was. And wait a minute, Cedric Alexander looking to defeat Damian Priest here. Be the first casualty of the matchup. But Priest gets the shoulder up. Springboard goes for the Tornado DDT, but Damian Priest had sidestepped it. We mentioned the World Tag Team Championship match on Raw. You got to wonder what the condition is after that physical tag team altercation of Priest and Dijakovic. And on the other hand, you got to wonder Bobby Lashley taking a loss to John Cena, who we just saw in action earlier tonight on Monday Night Raw. You got to wonder where the psyche of the almighty Lashley is at coming into Survivor Series as well as Dijakovic. What a big boot. One of the most versatile competitors in the WWE, Dominic Dijakovic, the size and strength that this man possesses inside of the ring, mixed with the ability and the agi agility, excuse me, that he has inside of the ring. And send it Cedric Alexander for an amusement park ride halfway across the ring and follows it up with that knee. May have been a knockout blow. This is where Dijakovic is at his best, heading to the top rope. Coming down with the splash. Simple but effective maneuver from the big man. Into the cover, but Alexander gets the shoulder up. Now look at this. Springboard and again with a picture-perfect moonsault. Dominic Dijakovic showing up and showing out here tonight's Survivor Series. Now look at this. Boston Crab. We are in the heart of Boston itself. Looking to tap out Cedric Alexander. Lashley able to break things up there. Dijakovic pulling out that Boston... Crab, oh, look at this, Lashley taking the eye off the Dij Dominic Dijakovic. Cedric Alexander just tagged in Shelton Benjamin. Dijakovic's got no idea, and Benjamin takes the advantage for the Hurt Business. Dijakovic, a Massachusetts, Massachusetts, excuse me, native as well, gets laid out with that exploder in the corner. Oh, we may have just witnessed our first casualty of our second of two Survivor Series elimination matches here tonight, but Dijakovic lives to fight another moment in this matchup. Of course, earlier tonight we saw Team Drew McIntyre versus Team Sheamus in this same style of matchup. It was a clean sweep for McIntyre and company. Drew, Pete Dunne, and Nakamura walking away with a three to nothing victory over Sheamus, Balor, and Apollo Crews. Will we see something similar in this matchup tonight? It's Lashley, a legal man now on Dominic Dijakovic. I'm sure once Dijakovic gets his wits about him, I'm sure he's going to have his eye on Bobby Lashley there. As we mentioned, he's been waiting weeks to get his hands on Lashley again. Took a loss to Bobby Lashley on Monday Night Raw. Now look at a reconcile that loss here tonight. What a power bomb! Only few men are going to be able to get somebody the size and stature of Bobby Lashley up in the air like that. Dijakovic is one of them. Well, Lashley dominating inside of that ring. Brings a presence like no other. Taking Dijakovic off his feet in the hurt business. You see the strategy here for those three men in the black and gold. Keeping the fresh legs. Shelton Benjamin in, but Dijakovic trying to bounce back. Been in for a number of minutes. Has felt the wrath of every single member of the hurt business here tonight. And Dijakovic choke slams, or I should say a choke throw to Shelton Benjamin. Whipping him off here. Could have been going for a belly to belly, but Shelton Benjamin with the counter. A nice clothesline, whether you like Benjamin or not, taking Dijakovic off his feet. Di Dijakovic in desperate need of a tag here, but Benjamin going to cut him off. Ankle lock. A move that he knows very well. AJ able to break it up, but you see Benjamin trying to take advantage of turn backs in this matchup into the cover of Dijakovic, but Dominic Dijakovic again survives in this matchup. Desperately needs a tag right now. Tag made to Cedric Alexander. Her business continuing to stay fresh. On a clothesline, takes Alexander off his feet. They call Dominic Dijakovic the rare breed for a reason. You don't find many guys 
With this dude's ability inside of the ring and also the ability to withstand punishment like that. And Alexander, what a counter off the Tornado DDT. We see Dijakovic right back up. Hard to keep this man down. One of the reasons why himself and Damian Priest are currently atop the World Tag Team Division in the WWE. Now look at this, he hit this power bomb moments ago on Lashley and he hits it again on Cedric Alexander. And again Dominic Dijakovic. To the middle rope. Moonsault on Cedric. Into the cover he goes. And oh, and that was a close one. Cedric Alexander barely getting the shoulder up and you see AJ Styles took out Bobby Lashley there. Trying to do all they can to get the numbers game in this matchup. And once again, Dominic Dijakovic, power bomb. This time he sits out with it. Into the pinfall situation, but Cedric Alexander again survives. Dijakovic's got to tag out here, man. I think that's where he's headed. Nope, he's going back to the offense on Cedric Alexander. He's been in this match for a while, and there you go. Tag made to the phenomenal AJ Styles, who has had a one-on-one -on -one run in with Cedric Alexander in the past many months ago on main event. And AJ Styles picked up the win on that night over Cedric. Now Cedric trying to make sure that the Phenomenal One and company do not gain the momentum in the Survivor Series six-man elimination bout. Nice drop kick, but Styles pops right back up and takes out the knee of Cedric Alexander. Right in the Hurt Business corner, Styles has got to get out of enemy territory right now. Perfect missile drop kick. AJ showcasing his talents here tonight at Survivor Series, trying to get momentum back on his side and possibly get the first elimination of this matchup. Pele kick like nobody else but AJ can do. And into the cover it goes. First elimination, not just yet. And AJ just going to start unloading on Cedric Alexander, bringing some of that strong style offense that Styles utilizes in his arsenal. Styles notorious for taking it to the air, but definitely a hard striker inside of the ring as he's going for it again. Nice backhand, follows it up with the clothesline. Cedric Alexander down. Cedric's in a predicament. AJ Styles heading to the top rope, looking to take advantage. Beautiful frog splash into the cover. First elimination of the matchup, could it be? Not just yet, Bobby Lashley broke it up, but Styles not letting Lashley get out of the ring without a little, withstand a little punishment. Almost had our first casualty, but still 3v3 in this matchup. Springboard, moonsault by AJ. Pinfall scenario, but Cedric gets the shoulder up. Who's going to be the first one to fall in this matchup? Right now, Cedric is really worse for wear. AJ Styles, crossface here. Not a move we usually see him pull out. Shelton Benjamin saves the day, but you see AJ just trying anything and everything to try to eliminate any member of the Hurt Business right now. Damian Priest taking out Shelton Benjamin. AJ continuing the offense on Cedric Alexander. Trying to make sure Cedric can't crawl to the corner and get some fresh likes in this contest. Styles is heading back up to the top. Wait a minute. Spiral tap of every rare maneuver in the arsenal from AJ Styles. Takes a lot of him to hit it, but it pays him dividends tonight. And the first casualty of the matchup, Cedric Alexander goes down, and it is three to two. Her business officially outnumbered here at Survivor Series. And Damian Priest was doing a number on Shelton Benjamin while all that was going on. Now Bobby Lashley taking out Damian Priest on the outside of the ring. Meanwhile, Styles, phenomenal form to the outside, but Benjamin sidesteps it. Chaos has ensued here tonight in Boston. But nonetheless, who's going to Bobby Lashley, the legal man in there with AJ Styles, Cedric Alexander hitting the showers. And we are down to AJ and Lashley inside of the middle of the ring. AJ's been waiting on this since September 10th. AJ eliminating Cedric Alexander with that spiral tap. We only really see AJ pull out that maneuver every so often. A very dangerous maneuver to hit inside the ring. Takes a lot out of the phenomenal one, but he could be looking for it again. Any means necessary to get the victory here tonight. And is Lashley gonna go down here, but Lashley able to survive. It was smart for AJ to go to the well with what worked, but 
Lashley a little bit fresher in the matchup than Cedric was. And now AJ going to tag in Damian Priest. He's probably the freshest in the matchup right now. Damian Priest misses wildly off the Instaguri. Lashley going to counter in a belly to belly. Strength advantage goes to the Almighty. Now into the submission hold, arm bar. Remember, eliminations can occur by pinfall submission, count out, or DQ in this contest. Gonna see these men pull out some maneuvers that they nor wouldn't normally pull out just to try to throw their opponents off their games and catch that elimination when they can. Her business fighting an uphill battle right now. Two to three. Lashley and Shelton Benjamin survive against Damian Priest, Dominic Dijakovic, and the phenomenal team captain, AJ Styles. And Lashley going to drag it dazed and confused. One half of the world tag team champions in enemy territory here. And now look at this. Elbow. Make it a dose. Tag made to Shelton Benjamin. Damian Priest crawls to the ropes. He tags in AJ Styles. AJ back into this fight after catching a moment's rest. But wait a minute, Benjamin. T-Bone suplex. Vintage maneuver. Out of Shelton here, but not uncharacteristic not to capitalize. AJ Styles catching Benjamin slipping. Benjamin's down, AJ Styles trying to take advantage of this opportunity. Oh, wait a minute. Got him in the predicament here. Styles clash, he lands in flush. Into the cover he goes. And Shelton Benjamin barely able to get the shoulder. I believe he might have also got a rope right there. Not sure which one the referee called. Nonetheless, AJ Styles is heading to the top rope and lays out Benjamin. Could be the final now in the coffin. Oh, and Benjamin again survives. You gotta give credit where it's due. Shelton Benjamin is hanging in there right now, surviving some of the best offense out of the arsenal of AJ Styles. Gonna tag in Dominic Dijakovic, who's had some few minutes to rest. See if he can bring anything different to the arsenal. And now back to that Boston Crab. Right here in the heart of the garden. Is Benjamin gonna tap out? And he does, and that is going to put the Hurt Business in a huge deficit, three to one. Shelton Benjamin has been eliminated. And it all lies on the shoulders of Bobby Lashley. Oh, wait a minute, Lashley, he's got Dijakovic up. Dominator. Oh, no. Into the cover. Dijakovic kicks out. The man still got hard in him. He remembers Monday Night Raw a few weeks ago. He ain't trying to go down swinging to Lashley twice. Drop toe hold. Man, are we going to see our second clean sweep of the night? Lashley fighting it off. Dijakovic right now. The whole Hurt Business riding on the shoulders of the Almighty. Oh, no. Dijakovic. Dijakovic. Retribution's in mind. Feast your eyes on Bobby Lashley. Into the cover. Our second of two clean sweeps here in Boston. And what a win for Dominic Dijakovic in those closing moments. You want to talk about retribution? Dijakovic's been sitting on that for the last number of weeks. Feast your eyes on Bobby Lashley. The knockout blow. Lashley staring up to the lights of the garden. Here. A clean sweep by Dijakovic, Priest, and Styles. The World Tag Team Champions and the Phenomenal One walking away with the victory over the Hurt Business. What well, is time for your Survivor Series main event? The WWE Championship is on the line inside Hell in a Cell. The number one contender, the Apex Predator Randy Orton, versus longtime rival, the Rated R Superstar Edge. For the final time ever, these two go head to head. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. An even weight, an even height. 
You see the debuts, you see the history between World Championships and WWE Championships. Both men, former two-time Royal Rumble match winners, Randy Orton, eight appearances inside the Hell in a Cell with a five and three record. Edge, on the other hand, only two appearances inside the Hell in a Cell with a one and one record. Randy Orton with more experience in the Hell in a Cell, but Edge, no stranger to the big match situation. It is main event time, November the 24th, 2022, Thanksgiving night, TD Garden, Boston, Massachusetts, Survivor Series. And here comes the number one contender. He outlasted Drew McIntyre and Mustafa Ali in the WWE Championship Eliminator that culminated back at Judgment Day. Randy Orton punched his ticket to meet whomever may be the WWE Champion on this night. And it just so happens to be a long time rival in the rated R superstar Edge. Edge and Randy Orton with so much history, especially in recent years, things had to come to a head. Things had to come to a screeching halt between these two men. Hence the reason this match was deemed to take place inside Hell in a Cell. For the final time ever, former friends, long time rivals, We'll meet inside the square circle and all the marbles are on the line. The WWE Championship, the most prestigious prize in the business today. Up for grabs between the champion and challenger. But even on top of the gold, the ultimate bragging rights between the legend killer and the rated R superstar. Who is the better man? Who is the best? Between these two former members of rated R KO. We take a look at the tail of the tape moments ago. Randy Orton with more experience inside of this hellacious structure. A five and three record for the Viper. As for Edge, two appearances inside the cell, cutting the difference one and one. Will the experience of Randy Orton inside of this structure pay him dividends tonight? Or is the Rated R Superstar operating on a completely different level right now? And the champion is in the house. It has been one hell of a year for Edge. Returning to Monday Night Raw. Winning Money in the Bank. Becoming the WWE Champion back at SummerSlam by defeating AJ Styles. There was a bump in the road and Edge lost the championship back in Extreme Rules to Austin Theory. He righted that wrong back on September the 10th at Judgment Day. But now all roads lead to Satan's prison, to the most demonic, hellacious structure known to mankind, hell in a cell. A match known to shorten careers meets the final resting place for Edge and Randy Orton here tonight. And the gold around the waist of the Rated R Superstar is what it's all about here tonight in Boston. It has been one hell of an evening here at Survivor Series, but we've waited all night long for the culmination of this storied feud between two longtime competitors, and that prestigious gold is on the line. Introducing the challenger from St. Louis, Missouri, weighing in at 250 pounds, the Viper. And introducing the champion from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, weighing in at 249 pounds, he is the WWE Champion, the Rated R Superstar, Edge! It is a big fight feel here in Boston. Edge hands over the WWE Championship for quite possibly the last time. Randy Orton taking a look 
at what could be his prize. But who is gonna be the last man remaining here tonight at Survivor Series? Randy Orton, Edge. The cell has been lowered. And the main event is underway. Here we go. The Viper, the Apex Predator, the number one contender versus the Hall of Famer, the Rated R Superstar and the defending WWE Champion. So much bad blood over the years between these two men. It was only right for everything to culminate inside the steel of the hell in the cell. It should be very interesting to see how this plays out. We talked about how Randy Orton has more experience inside the hell in the cell, but Edge, no stranger to big match situations. He's been in the cell before. He's main evented WrestleMania. A decorated career for the Rated R Superstar. He has done everything there is to do in the WWE. Every championship, every accolade, Edge has accomplished it. But can he add on to that already Hall of Fame career tonight? With a successful title defense over Randy Orton. We're going to find out throughout this main event. And Edge exits the Hell in the Cell. Randy Orton's got his eyes. Edge is looking underneath the ring for something here. And Edge is grabbing a kendo stick. I guess there was a little left over from that last man standing earlier tonight, and Orton takes advantage. We already saw one kendo stick break, and there's another. Randy Orton into the cover, already on edge, and Edge gets the shoulder up. It goes without saying, but anything goes. No disqualifications inside Hell in the Cell. This thing's got to be won by pinfall or submission inside the square circle, but anything else does not matter. Orton now heads to the outside, and Randy Orton's grabbing the wood of a table here. These guys wasted no time introducing some accessories into this playground. These guys got to be careful, brawling away on the outside of the ring. The ring surrounded by the steel, surrounded by the Hell in the Cell structure. Punishment will be inflicted as Randy Orton is the first to eat the steel. Edge throwing Orton's face first right into the cage wall. You see how the fight is really restricted around ringside. Not too many places to go when you're locked inside the confines of the Hell in the Cell structure. Oh, and Edge hitting Randy Orton off the steel steps right there. And, oh, I believe Randy Orton may already be busted wide open. We are, what, two minutes into this matchup? And if I'm not mistaken, Orton's showing some color. He ate the steel of the cage and then eating those steel steps, Randy Orton... Got to be careful in this matchup, especially the later it goes. The blood trickling from the forehead's only going to make you more tired. And put a target on your forehead in this matchup. And after a brawl around ringside, Edge sent Randy Orton into the ring. At that table right there that Orton brought into play a few moments ago. And a swinging neck breaker to the rated R superstar. Edge obviously with a history of neck problems. Has looked great ever since coming out of retirement. Which is really where things escalated between Orton and Edge a couple of years ago where Orton wanted to put Edge back into retirement. And hell, I'm sure that's on the mind of the Viper here tonight. And a suplex by Orton, simple but effective, crashing him into the canvas. Suplex might have knocked that table out of ringside. I don't think Orton cares right now. He's got Edge in a predicament in the corner. Using those rights and lefts to beat down the Rated R Superstar. Edge has had one hell of a year, as we said. Money in the bank. Two more WWE Championship reigns in the list of accolades for Edge throughout this year. As for Randy Orton, he's really showed a different side over the last number of months, turning his back on his former tag team partner, the original bro, Matt Riddle. Of course, those two men went one-on-one -on -one back at Extreme Rules. Randy Orton only agreed to the matchup that Riddle wanted, and only would do it if Riddle promised that it would be the only meeting and that when Randy Orton won that there would be no more chances that Randy Orton would get his opportunity to move on from RK bro and that's exactly what happened and we all saw how much punishment Randy Orton inflicted on that night at Extreme Rules and quite possibly Matt Riddle's never been the same since of course as we mentioned Randy Orton earning this WWE Championship match here tonight in the lead up to Judgment Day defeated Drew McIntyre and then on September the 10th at Judgment Day, defeated Mustafa Ali in the finals of the WWE Championship Eliminator. That's the reason Randy Orton is the number one contender here tonight. Of course, is back at Judgment Day as well, where Edge 
Won back the WWE Championship after a short time without it, defeating Austin Theory in what was a great wrestling main event. That is one thing I don't expect to see too much of in this matchup is some pure wrestling. And these two men have been fighting ever since the opening bell. Orton bringing that table back into play. Obviously, it's got something in mind with the wood here tonight, and it's got Edge. Hangman, neckbreaker there, and a fall for the Rated R Superstar. Now Orton's grabbing the table. Orton clearly has got some punishment in mind for the WWE Champion here tonight. What is that punishment going to be? What has Orton got in mind? What are the wheels are turning for the Apex Predator? Edge trying to look to avoid disaster here. He's got Orton in a predicament, slamming him down in the corner. And these guys have been going at it since the opening bell. A lot of brawling between these two men, but you kind of see they're taking their time with each other here. They're playing the long game in this Hell in the Cell, and Orton's already shown color, dripping from the forehead. A target on the head of Randy Orton, as we mentioned, but we're going to see how that'll play in the long game in this matchup. As Orton sends Edge over the top rope down to the outside, we are back out right by the steel cage walls of the cell. Let's see who's going to get the upper hand. Let's see if one of these men is going to be able to avoid disaster, if one of them is going to eat the hell in the cell yet again. Edge has yet to come in contact with it. Randy Orton, on the other hand, went face first a few minutes ago and just ate a super kick to the jaw. I think I might have saw some blood flying around here at ringside. Orton's got to be dazed off that kick from Edge. Oh, still fighting. Oh, and an uppercut to the WWE Champion. Brutal. Just a brutal fight since the opening bell. And Edge with another kick. And sends Orton into the steel steps again. You know, kind of like how we mentioned earlier in the last man standing match between John Cena and Austin Theory. No headlock takeovers here tonight. It's all about a fist fight inside the Hell in a Cell for the WWE Championship. Edge again whipping Randy Orton off. Orton barely avoiding disaster with the cell right there. And Edge missing for that super kick again, and Orton sends Edge right into the ring apron. And oh no, and Edge hits the steel steps this time. May have hit the steel cage on the way down. Randy Orton, you see he's taking his time here at ringside, not trying to rush into anything, and once again throw an edge into the steps. Cold and calculated is the number one contender. We really saw it on display a couple of months ago in that matchup against Riddle at Extreme Rules, and we've really seen it on display with Randy Orton ever since, and Edge eats the cell, and Edge is trying to fight back. Felt the steel of the cold, steel cold of the cell, doesn't want to do it again, and Edge sent Randy Orton through the cage wall. The hell of the cell may come crashing down tonight. Edge just sent Randy Orton through a ride right through the wall down here to ringside, and the fight continues whether it's in the cell or out of the cell. The cell is usually meant to keep the men inside. We've seen people break out before, but at the end of the day, this thing can only be won inside of the squared circle. Take the fight where you have it. But somebody's only leaving with the WWE Championship if the decision's in the ring. And the fight has now broken out outside of Hell in a Cell to ringside. And Orton throwing edge may have hit the cell there. The audience here in Boston, the barricade's breaking the view up a little bit, but Edge trying to fight back. The fight just continues. These guys are throwing each other all around ringside. And the more these guys ragdoll each other around, the more falls they come in contact with, the steel cell, the steps, the floor, the damage is going to start wreaking a toll at some point. Can't believe Edge, the emphatic throw to Randy Orton right through the cell. Edge ate the cell, almost as if he woke him up, and then immediately sent Orton crashing through the wall. They're battling here through these announce tables. Already had one casualty tonight. Are we going to see another? Randy Orton in the barricade. Fight continues here for the WWE Championship on Thanksgiving night 2022 here at Survivor Series. Oh, and a headbutt to Randy Orton. Now Orton again sending Edge right into the corner. The fight continues. Edge is down and out. Number one contender eyeing up the WWE Champion. 
Orton's drew blood already. Edge has yet to. I'm sure he would love to keep it that way. And Orton needs to barricade again. Ragdolling each other around. Back and forth the momentum swings. In Hell in the Cell tonight. You gotta imagine this is a long time coming between these two men. Really never got the chance. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Edge, Orton's down, and Edge is scaling the Hell in the Cell. You have got to be kidding me. Randy Orton just realized where Edge went. I don't think Orton wants to climb that cell and meet, and meet Edge at the top of this structure. Orton's looking up. I don't think Orton's too interested right now. The WWE Champion is atop the cell, is atop Boston, and is challenging Randy Orton to come finish this fight on top of hell. I don't know. The wheels are spinning. I don't think Randy Orton really wants to do it. He knows the casualties that could come. Oh, oh no. Randy Orton said, screw it. Orton's climbing the cell wall, and Edge is fired up. What started in the ring has now made its way to the top of the Hell in the Cell. Edge and Orton meeting in the most dangerous of situations possible here tonight. Gotta be damn near 20, 25 feet in the air. And now dead center of the Hell in the Cell, Orton grounded and pounded on the Rated R Superstar, trying to make sure he doesn't come out on the losing end of this battle atop the structure, but there's Edge. The brawl continues. Stiff elbows to the open wound of Randy Orton. Oh no, Edge spear! A spear on top of the cell! And not only did he spear him on top of the cell, but notice the landing point of Randy Orton right in the crossroads of those beams and Orton, oh! Oh man, Orton was close from falling off the hell in the cell. That was dangerously close for the number one contender. Man, this is getting dangerous. Oh no, not on the cell. Orton just face first onto the cell structure. These two gotta be careful. Those, oh my. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Those, that roof is only with, meant to withstand so much punishment. Orton with an uppercut, you see. That one panel is already folded. No, 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 Edge, Edge, through the cell. You have got to be kidding me, Randy Orton. Oh my, the Exploder Suplex just sent Edge falling all the way down from hell. And Orton's got that table still. They didn't climb back down, walk their asses back into the ring. Randy Orton just sent Edge falling through the sky down to the ground. And it almost gets uncomfortable to watch when Randy Orton gets into this mindset here. The table's in play. Orton again sends Edge through the wood of the table. Just wrap the damn match up already. And oh no. Edge is barely able to stand. Orton now is not done with the punishment. We talked about this back in Extreme Rules when Orton was going to this place and really snapping and beating the hell out of Riddle. How uncomfortable it was to watch. And Edge somehow is trying to avoid disaster again. I don't know how the hell he's walking right now after taking a fall damn near 20 feet to the floor and then crashing through a table to follow that up. Oh, and now Orton with another left hand. This is the punishment the Hell in the Cell can bestow upon your career. There's a reason these matches are few and far between anymore. There's a reason that Edge and Randy Orton were deemed worthy to step foot inside this structure. Because they knew it was the only way to end things between the two of these guys once and for all. Edge is on the outside. Randy Orton has brought another wooden table into play. And I don't know what the hell he needs to be doing with that. As if there already hasn't been enough punishment in this contest. Edge back into the ring. Randy Orton. Oh no. Eyeing up the table again. And Edge goes through the table. Edge is withstanding assault after assault from the number one contender and is somehow staggering on his own two feet. 
Orton's not done, but Edge knows it's now or never to turn the tide in this contest. Now, I might be mistaken, but I believe Edge has been cut open. Oh, yeah. Edge has been cut open as well. Both these men are bleeding the crimson mask, and that headbutt ain't going to do anybody any favors. Edge trying to fight back. Both these men are bleeding from the forehead. Randy Orton has introduced another table into this matchup. Orton swings and a miss. Edge grabbing a hold of the number one contender and sending him down to the floor. May not have been as disastrous as Edge's fall, but Orton certainly taking a fall like that ain't going to do him no good. This is where Edge has done the most damage thus far in this match, just brawling around ringside. That's how he cut open Randy Orton in the early going, and that's how he's really was in the momentum driver's seat in the first few minutes of this matchup as well. Fight spills back into the ring. It's blood versus blood right now. Orton with a kick. Edge is on his knees. DDT takes Edge out. Edge is barely staggering right now, but you see the WWE champion, the heart and the resilience of the rated R superstar still got fight in him as we enter real late waters in this WWE championship matchup. And oh no, not for the top rope. Blood is trickling down at Orton, superplex, dead center of the ring. It almost gets uncomfortable to watch. Randy Orton, piece by piece, picking apart the WWE Champion. Not to mention he has another table yeah. looming in the corner, but I'm sure he's got some vicious intent in mind. Edge trying to survive, counters out right there. Orton unloading on the WWE Champion. Edge with a shot there, Edge with a drop kick. Orton counters. Edge avoids disaster again, and there's the drop kick by the WWE Champion. Orton bounces up, goes for a drop kick. Edge counters. And a shot right to the open wound to slow the pace down. Back and forth we go inside Hell in the Cell. When it's been an amazing night here at Survivor Series. New champions crowned. Revenge being served. And only one person is going to come back alive after this Hell in a Cell matchup. And right now, Randy Orton is in the driver's seat. And ever since Edge took that fall, it really feels like the Rated R Superstar is fighting an uphill battle. Every time he tries to fight back, tries to build some momentum, Randy Orton's right there to cut him off. And Orton's just got something dastardly in mind with these tables, man. He keeps going back to the wood. But Edge is trying to avoid disaster by any means necessary. Orton trying to grab a hold. Once again, grabs a hold of the WWE Champion and sends him in the corner. And a clothesline. Simple. Extremely effective as the champion goes down. And Orton, once again, is setting up the wood of the table. And Edge trying to make sure that it's not going to be the rated R Superstar. Going through it this time. Neckbreaker lands on the table. May not have cracked through it, but definitely going to do some damage. And Orton returns the favor. I'm telling you, man, ever since Edge took that fall, he cannot build the proper momentum in this matchup. You see the toll of this matchup is starting to catch up to the WWE Champion. Table set up yet again by the Legend Killer. Orton says Edge into the corner. Edge again trying to counter. And sending Randy Orton over the top rope. Almost hitting the cell there. One better count his lucky stars that he didn't hit the cell structure. You see Orton's trying to avoid disaster right now. Back into the ring, Edge on the chase, and Orton finds Edge right where he wants him. Damn neck breaker by Orton. Edge is in excruciating pain inside of the cell right now. Orton yet again setting up that table to drop kick takes Edge off his feet. What the hell does Randy Orton got in mind at those tables, man? He's already put Edge through one, not one, not two, but now he's looking for a third one. And if Edge eats one more table, I just don't know how the Rated R Superstar is going to uh, uh, excuse me, avoid disaster and live to fight another moment in this matchup. Oh, and vintage counter by Orton off the scoop slam. 
Edge is trying. Edge is coming out swinging, but I just don't know if he's got enough left in the tank. I don't know what Orton's got in mind, but Edge obviously knows that Orton's wheels are spinning. He's trying to avoid it by any means necessary here. Grab it a hold of Randy Orton. Neck breaker. Randy Orton's leg luckily hit the table. I think Edge may be the one now counting his lucky stars that he avoided disaster. Orton may be in trouble. Edge in the corner. This is what Edge needs to walk away the champion. A spear. Into the cover. No, Randy Orton kicks out just at the last millisecond of this matchup. That may have been Edge's best shot after all the offense that he's taken from Orton. RKO out of nowhere. No, Edge kicks out again. Oh, man. First the spear, then Randy Orton kicks out. Orton breaks out of it. RKO out of nowhere, Edge kicks out. Who is gonna survive hell in the cell and leave Boston on Thanksgiving 2022 with the WWE Championship of the World? Orton grabbing a steel chair and now sends Edge right into the structure. And we are in deep, deep waters in this matchup. And Randy Orton just delivering a chair shot to the Chrome Dome of Edge. And the Crimson Mask continues to flow down the forehead of both men, but especially the WWE Champion, as he may be knocked out cold after eating the steel. Orton's eyeing him up, tries going for it again. Edge thankfully devoids the chair shot there, goes behind, takes Orton off his feet. And Edge trying to end this matchup. Into the cover he goes, but Randy Orton kicks out. The Hell in the Cell moves on forward. And now Edge is in the driver's seat with the chair. Orton counters and a drop kick, and he drop kicks the steel chair right at Edge's face. God damn it. And another shot to Edge. Oh my God, Orton is unloading right now. I don't know how Edge is still conscious after everything he has taken in this matchup from Randy Orton. And now the number one contender beaten down on the WWE Champion with absolutely no remorse left in his soul. Edge can't even stand up on his own two feet. Orton is putting pedal to the metal. Edge able to avoid it right there. Edge with a shot takes Orton off, living a fight at least one more second in this contest. Edge goes for the kick. Orton counters. Orton with a shot. Another one. Unloading on the champion right now. And Edge is in deep, deep trouble. And oh no. Oh no. Orton eyeing him up. RKO number two. Randy Orton is the WWE champion. Whether you like him or not, Hell in the Cell wrote the final story in a long Long history between the Apex Predator and the Rated R Superstar. Here is your winner and the new WWE Champion, the Viper, Randy Orton. They say Hell in the Cell will change your career forever. And I don't know if Edge nor Randy Orton, no matter the result, will ever be the same again. A valiant effort by the Rated R Superstar. But November the 24th, 2022 belongs to that man. And once again, the WWE has entered an age of Orton. The new WWE Champion, the Apex Predator. Thank you for joining us on your Thanksgiving night 2022. And we will see you for the WWE Draft on Raw. Good night, everybody. Face on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with the knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise, you can hate on that. I don't play both sides, doing me no cap. I'm a rock.